You know, I don't get tired of that intro. You know, it's simple. I, you know. Would you like it if it's a Garrett Andrews show? The Garrett Andrews show. You know, It'd be nice. Christina Palumbo show. Christina Palumbo show. Now we're yeah, talking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, well, um, I'm here and you're not. Uh, but anyway, uh. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, was walking down the street and I, and, you know, I, I, you know, over the course of a year, I've lost like 30 pounds. I meant to lose 15, then I lost another 15 because of the, the neck thing. And so I'm a little embarrassed because I look, you know, I don't look right. I mean, I'm really skinny. And so I'm trying to eat and everything else. And I'm trying to work out, but I'm, you know, it's all very gingerly and all. So I walk by this guy's office who lives across the street all the time. So he sees me. He says, man, I got to tell you, what kind of exercise program do you have? I said, well, uh, what do you mean? He goes, you're unbelievable. I can't believe the weight you lost. Look at you. Like, <laughs> I said, yeah, let him fucking dig into your neck for a while. That'll do it. But he just thought I'd been working out and, you know, look at you. So that's the first time anybody kind of said, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he was lying. I don't know. I told you, but, you look good. Well, you know what's weird? I'm, I mean, that's I'm, it. You, know, you don't think you look good, but you lost the weight that you needed I'm, to lose. Yeah, you've got so the kind skinny. of weight loss that you want. We, we want you to send us pictures for Thinspiration. Yeah. I'll put you on my fridge. Don't say that again. And then well, I won't here's open the, it. You know, like here's the funny thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's like um, none of my clothes really fit good. and everything else. So I don't know. You know, I'm not going to go and get everything Jay, fixed just yet. Can I just say know? one thing? You need to get rid of sure. those clothes, all right? These old Armani suits you have from the 80s, you know, they're old. Mm -hmm. Get rid of them. You need some new. Th I did the whole thing. I got rid of every stitch of clothing I they're had. They're classics. That's no, no, not no, classic. No, no, no. You're a, it's baggy pants. It looks ridiculous. You know what my mother would have done just Get now? A, what? Did you hear me cough? Yeah. Oh, my God, stop it. You made me cough just now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whenever you challenge my mother if she was yeah. drinking a cup of coffee and she, oh, oh, God, the doctor told me not to cough. Oh, God. <laughs> and she would always say this thing, ever since my operation. And I didn't, we didn't know what operation it was. I don't know what it was. Hey, by the way. But a new wardrobe is going to make you look like a new man, feel like a new All man. Right. I feel great. Yeah, I've you got, need skinny pants. Look at, look at these All size right. pants. 32, 30. I'm wow. rocking them. That's that's, you know what? That's what I am. Yeah. And I'm be definitely proud of 30 you guys can share clothes yeah, now. Fun. And you know what you do? Mm -hmm. you, you wear that mm -hmm. label on there, and I, I, I point to people. I, I point to my button. I go, what does that say? And they go, Levi. And I go, no, it says 3230. Read it. <laughs> and weep. <laughs> and I'm well, fucking I starving, think, uh, all right? I'm starving. I really am. I want to. I just can't wait to turn on Fox tonight or any of the right-wing talk shows. <laughs> Front page of every newspaper. Oh, uh, what story are you talking Barack about? Barack Obama oh, okay. shakes the hand of Cuban President Raul Castro. Oh, please. So what are you going to do? You might, you know, what are you you might do? as well. I agree with you. What are you going to do? You might as well just, you know, jump off a bridge because he's communist. He's done. I mean, you know, there he is. You know, you know he, that. He, you he, know, always, don't he you? always supported Mandela. And, uh, well, you know, Fidel did, Fidel Castro did, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're at the, at the funeral together, the memorial service, and they go, hey, hola, you hola, hi, hey. So, so here's a, here's That's a question. That's if all. you, you know, somebody asked me this once, you know, I really wasn't a fan of George, uh, uh, George, uh, George W. George Bush's, George W. Bush. And, and not that I'd ever be invited, but someone said, if you were invited to the White House, and part of it was meeting him and everything else, would you have gone, during his administration. And I thought, you know, if you put the guy down and don't like him and everything else, you know, do you go visit the White House where he is? A lot of people don't go visit Barack Obama because they don't like him. Mm -hmm. So if you'd have been invited, Kevin, well, you know, during, you know, the, the time when George Bush was the president, would you have gone to the White Absolutely. House? Absolutely. Uh, I've, yes, I've always Shook respected the presidency uh, hmm. opposed to the person. You know, I mean, so even though he was elected, even, and he we, was don't, elected, we don't overthrow people, right? Okay. I, That's you cool. know, I uh, I didn't agree with you know most of the stuff he did, George W. Bush, or mm -hmm. I like George. I like George Senior. You know, and he was probably 
and I liked Reagan, you know, and I didn't, I disagreed with him a lot also, you know, but it's like the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, you know, I disagree with it, but I still go to church, you know. You do? Yeah. You still, you still attend Mass? I, you know, not every, you know, I'm not a good Catholic, you know, but who is? Touch my well, you know, um, take pictures of my dick, you know. I do bad. Things. My wife was, uh, my <laughs> wife was raised. Uh, Jesus looks good you know, on the cross, you know. He's handsome. Uh, I, my wife was raised. Realize, you know. He's like, oh God, he's got nothing on. Oh, I'm a sinner. I'm bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Seven <everybody>. masturbates <laughs> to Jesus Christ. You know what? Don't start. <laughs> Don't start. That's... All right. I'm sorry. That's all. You wrong. know what? It's all wrong. You know. You know what's funny? <laughs> I, Garrett's not laughing. Okay. Mm -mm. Blasphemous. Not funny. Yeah, not funny. It's like when you tell an ethnic <laughs> joke in front of my mother-in-law. Why? <laughs> Why do you have to do That's that? Funny. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I just, you know, I don't do it anymore. But, oh, my God. You know. Terrible. You know. <laughs> or I go like this. So the guy walked in and went, well, what do you, you know, what's going on? And she, oh, my God, why do you have to do that? I go, because that's what he sounded like. I wanted to make fun of him. That's why. No, but I think him shaking. What do you think, Garrett? Shaking hands with the, with the communist guy that we, with the, you know, we, you know, we have Guantanamo there. We have missiles pointed at him. We have, they can't do anything, you know. I think it's a good know, icebreaker. For, Eventually, we have to let people go to Cuba. It's pretty dumb. Oh, right? we have to ruin yeah. that island. Yeah, not just go to later. Cuba. Yeah, Cuba's gonna. We need that gonna island resurgent, ruined. Yeah. Re resurgence of, in, you know. We need to that to island to, to. We need to to spoil their water. To give them tuberculosis in condominiums. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do in Cuba. So, uh, by the way, during Nelson Mandela's memorial service, oh, this is the greatest. <laughs> the interpreter for the deaf <laughs> was found not to be an interpreter for the deaf. Oh, isn't that the greatest? I would have loved to have been that person just standing there, just making, moving my arms up and down. Ah! He stood. Do you know about this, Christina? You know this story? Uh, I don't think so. Say it again. The guy, the guy doesn't know sign language. He's just, he just was moving his hands. He, was he a random guy, or they? Just... No, they say it's nepotism. They say that, you know. Listen, I got to tell you something. And I said it yesterday too. Mandela goes to jail and he comes out and peace and love and everything else. That's a horrible country, South Africa. Yeah. Horrible country. They can't rule themselves. Corruption. All of it. Yeah. And, you know, they, um, I don't know, I don't know, uh, what the, what the white population does to them or is doing, or I don't know if they even have any representatives anymore. They have diamonds. I know that. They have, they have coal. They have oil. They have, they have lots of incredible stuff. It's a beautiful place. But the inhabitants, um, can't figure it out. And, you know, all of Africa drives me completely fucking nuts. And they go, well, you know, they lived under, you know, the thumb of the, the, of the rulers and the Dutch and the whole thing and all. Really? Really? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. Lots of other people, as soon as they got under the, out of the yoke of that shit, they got their fucking act together. So it pisses me off, right? So there they all are. And they say that, that somebody's cousin is the guy and he is not saying a word, nothing. Zero. Do you remember the sign language person from the Bloomberg? Was it Bloomberg's address? I've seen him. Yeah, that was. Where the, she was. She was very, woman? very, very animated with yeah. everything, and she was like almost kind of angry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen. So that maybe before. there, there, there's like a Johan Blau, B L A A U W, the vice chairman of the South African Translators Institute, had strong words about the interpreter's performance. This person was not interpreting. It was nonsense. It was finger movements. No, there was no message. He was a complete phony. <laughs> he didn't do anything. Nepotism. He said nothing. nothing. He said nothing the whole time. And, and he was next to the president. He was next to president No, no, Obama. all of them. Everybody. No, he was next to everybody. But Whoever our, pre went our up there. president, he's interpreting for our president. There well, you know what's Africa. sad that is, is really, all the deaf the people greatest. were turning to people and going, and, and, and the people in the living room were going, <laughs> be quiet, be quiet, I want to listen to the president, oh, be quiet, Mumbaba, be quiet. They were all just oh, tweeting their yeah. problems. Yeah. yeah. But they must have been, so, any deaf person must have been so angry. I mean, just, oh, just livid, you know, now, rageful. Years ago, uh, when I was at uh, this radio station in L.A., 
um, the the AIDS walk started, and I was one of the first hosts of of the AIDS walk in Los Angeles. And I think Kevin, when we first did it, we did it at Paramount in the parking lot, and I believe we had maybe like fifteen hundred people or a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And I was at at Power One Hundred Six, and we sponsored it, and it was a big deal. Now we played dance music and stuff, and it was Hispanic and it was gay and everything else. And I also would be in the gay pride parades and all that because. One, it was okay with me, a lot of gay friends and stuff, but also our station was supported by the gay community with mm -hmm. the dancing and all that stuff. Right? So I would host the breakfast at Paramount. Paramount has this big fake sky and a big fake pool in front. You know it when right. you go to L.A.? Yeah. You ever, yeah. So they would have the, 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 the beginning of it and coffee and everything else, and it and it – Let's see, I was at uh, Power 106 for like nine years or whatever, as long as I've been here. And by the time I left, I think we, you know, we had 25 or 30,000, and now it's, you know, who knows, it's a million people. There would be this interpreter, and, and it was all of this, you know, when all that stuff kind of started. So I get up there, and the, and the inter there's two of them, one on each side, and they are interpreting. And I've done this every time I've had a chance, and I've done it at other speeches. I go, it's wonderful to be here. And what's amazing is, on my way to the event, I was uh, on the freeway. And I don't know if anybody, you know, you've all been here, so you don't know about it. A circus elephant escaped from the Ringling Barnum and, Brother, uh, Barnum and Bailey Brothers uh, trucks. Now, the, the interpreter makes this big sign for elephant with the, with the nose, mm -hmm. right? And I said, and here's what's amazing. The elephant begins to gallop down the freeway. And now the person has to do an elephant galloping. <laughs> Kevin, if you ever get a chance to do this, it, what happens is, is the crowd has no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But when they see the interpreter making the elephant and the nose, and by the way, do you know what the sign for, for, for shitting is? That my dad's uh, taught deaf language. You mm -hmm. take your fist and you put your thumb inside your fist, and you just drop your other fist out of out of your fist. You just drop it. Like, no, no, you don't make a noise. <laughs> okay. It's sign language. I'm making a yeah, but you, you can make you, facial gestures. So people know. No, you really can't. Well, you so maybe, you but, but like, you like this, Gary Christine, like that. Yeah, like. You, oh no, no, and you just drop it out of it. And and pissing is you take your little finger and you just okay. shake it, and that's pissing. Mm -hmm. So I would say, and 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 I don't mean to be rude. But the reason why I was a little what late, and I apologize. No, your... I said, no, no, I wouldn't say sex. Well, maybe I did, but I didn't. And I said, the Circle elephant, of course, is so nervous, <laughs> he begins to relieve, he, he begins to poo-poo on the freeway. And the guy has to make the poo-poo sign and the pee-pee sign. Well, i got to tell you, it is the most fun I've ever had. Now, they probably asked me not to do it after that. But it is the most fun if you ever get a chance to do it. That's what you need to do. And you can make, you can do outer space. You know, they have to make a spaceship. You know, all kind of stuff. An elephant in outer space. Hey everyone, Dirty Sense with Kristen. I have a great phrase for you today. We're gonna learn how to say fuck this shit. Cause seriously, fuck this shit. You know? So to say this, we're gonna start off with the word fuck. This version of the word fuck is gonna be a loan sign. So what you're gonna do is sign the letters F and then K together. So the sign for the letter F and then the sign for the letter K, fuck. Um, for this, you're just going to kind of point off in an off direction. And then shit, you're going to make a fist with one hand. The other hand is going to put that thumb inside it, and it's going to pop Thank out. Thank you. So we're going to put that all together and nice. say, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Thank you, Garrett. You know what's amazing? I have to tell you, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, I, I hate the people that are on the Internet who are useless. And I believe that, that blogging... And the Internet have given people that never, ever should have had a voice, ever, and should have been either incarcerated or put away or, or never heard from. 99.9% uh, uh, .9 that comment on the Internet are useless slabs <laughs> of flesh. And so, but when I hear a woman showing you how to say fuck that shit in sign language, mm -hmm. I'm glad to be alive and I'm glad to be in this century. That's, I that, that's a very uh, useful tool that uh, she's showing us, you know. Yeah. And she just kind of did it at home, you know, and said, just wanted to. Sh How mm -hmm. many hits does that have? 24,000. 24,000. God, I can't get 600 hits. <laughs> now, um, 
my dad uh, taught uh, a, a, a deaf school when he was in college. You know, in the I University grew, grew Texas. up right down the street from the New York City School for the Deaf. Do you like know the, that the in Florida, the, the deaf school has been the the, the uh, football champion for years and years and years? They they beat yeah. everybody. <laughs> oh, and if you've never seen a uh, a deaf school play, it's unbelievable. I mean, they are incredibly disciplined. It's totally silent, and um, and they're they're unbelievable. So my dad taught at the deaf school, but they treated the deaf kids. They would they would go to the deaf school and they would sleep there. They would live there in dorms. They were almost put away like they were mentally ill. They were treated not well. Now my dad and his buddy were uh, doubles uh, tennis uh, players, and they were playing for. They were in the playoffs for the state championship in Texas in college, and they were getting ready to go. There was a riot at the deaf school, and they couldn't play in these playoffs and had to rush to the deaf school. The kids had been, you know, lighting the everything on fire. The reason is, is the football coach would punish the, not just the kids on the football team. If you did something wrong, you know what a clip is when somebody runs up behind you and clips oh, you in yeah. football? Oh, yeah. It's is one of the illegal. worst. Totally illegal. It can snap your neck. It can yeah. break your knees. They do that from that behind, right? And if and at least you can flinch a little bit if you can hear, you know. He would punish the kids by having people clip them. Ugh. And kids were getting hurt and everything, and they and they rioted. And, you know, my dad uh, used to have conversations with, you know, I don't know, homeless people or whatever. But when I was a kid, they would hand out these cards sometimes in downtown New Orleans. And say, I'm, I'm deaf. If I give you this card, we had the sign language on it. Remember that? Mm -hmm. little, remember they the hand those cards? out on the subway. Yeah, they'll do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you give them a dollar or no, whatever. And then, <clears throat> it's illegal to pay a dollar. It is? <laughs> yep. Right. Let's go to Mark, who's in Thank Oregon. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, yes, Mark, Chase Thomas. Yeah, the sign for vagina is really funny. Too. Ooh, what's that? Ooh. You take your uh, two thumbs, put them together, and your two pointer fingers, and put them together into mm -hmm. a triangle, and then just go down in front of your crotch. Oh. Oh, I have wow. a vagina. Look at me, everybody. Hey, everyone. This, this is Kristen. I've got a great now. brace for you tonight. This one's for all the ladies. It's, I want to eat your lesbian vagina. Ah, now you can have to pick up lines, too. all the ladies. All right, we're going to start off with I. 74,000 hits. To eat. Your Garrett, they want to cut my production budget. Can Captain you believe it? <laughs> vagina. So two L hands put together to make what looks like a vagina. Yeah, All right. together now. Uh, I want to eat your lesbian vagina. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Have a great night. Hooray! This makes uh, so now, let me, now, Christina, Christina, who is this? Who is this woman? <laughs> Can we get this time. woman on as a guest? I mean, does she, oh, if sure. she if she lives in New York, that would be unbelievable, and she would come in and give everybody sign language. That'd be whatever. great for the radio. Mark, there you go. We we um, we gave you the one for I want to eat your lesbian vagina, and right, um, sure. for shit. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, a lot of emails about um, Medicare and the uh, <laughs> Obamacare and all that, tons and tons and tons. I erased all of them because after the guest was gone, I didn't care. Um, it's just, you know, if I if I was low income and I needed it, I would be online and get it and everything else. And it's like, as I left yesterday and I was driving uh, to the post office, I turned on uh, the radio and there was a discussion of... Um, of the affordable health care. And so the interviewer had gone to Texas, and two guys were losing their jobs at some plant. Both of them, Kevin, were married with children. One of them had four kids and one had two. And so the interviewer says, um, you're going you're gonna to lose your insurance at the plant or whatever. And one guy had been out of work for a long time or, or worked very little and said, the interviewer said, now are you going to apply for affordable health care. And both of them adamantly, no, we will not. And the woman said, well, well, why not? Because it's going to cost me seven, eight hundred dollars a month. And so the woman said, have you gone online and checked that? He goes, no, I have not even researched it, but I right. won't touch it. That's, that's no the whole good. Thing. That's because Fox Television and our, that's what they're telling people. Don't even go on. It's, it's a waste of time. It's, it's a waste crazy. of money. Don't and do so it. then the woman says, the woman says, oh, it's so well, annoying. well, you know, if you're below uh, 30 grand or whatever, you get a subsidy of uh, sometimes up to four or five hundred dollars a month. And the guy went, really? 
<laughs> what do you mean, like a handout like that? She said, no, you get a you get a subsidy to help you buy, you know, the insurance. And the guy says, I won't even go on the website like that. Yeah, now he's married yeah. with a wife and four kids. And I listened to that and I thought, this hatred or this. So here you are at a at a uh, at a big plant. The vice president of the company is probably not losing his job. He's he's firing people, right? Uh, the the corporation is going to stay in business and they're downsizing and everything else. And this guy doesn't want anybody to help him. Why not? I was saying this yesterday. We had the guy Joe from Pennsylvania get mad at this. Mm -hmm. It's it's all part of 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 you know uh, our pursuit of happiness. I mean, it's you know it's right there in our our Bill of Rights and the Constitution and everything else. They would actually put those words in there, you know. You know, life, liberty, you know, the pursuit of happiness. It's like we're supposed to help each other. It's amazing to me. It just, and everyone thinks that the money is just goes down some, some shithole. It, it doesn't. Look, at every company, and Sirius is included in this, there is waste up to double digit, d double digits, 10 to, 10 to 15% of waste, every company, whether it's, you know, expense accounts or paper or people that you don't need or consultants or whatever the hell it is. And the United States government has the same level of, of waste. It's unbelievable, you know. Hey, by the way, we, we, uh, we no longer own General Motors. Did you know that? Well, the government doesn't. It's back, uh, they... well, no, no, we, you know, because you know what? I went to the post office and got a tune up just two weeks ago. So now I can't. I don't know if you know that or not. You go, you go, <laughs> I went to the IRS, Garrett, and yeah. while they were auditing me, uh, they adjusted my, my front end. <laughs> you know, rotated the right tires. in. They, uh, the government owns it. I did the whole thing. Yeah. They so put you up on the rack. I heard we only yeah, lost you know. $10 billion from that. Well, wait a minute. And didn't oh, wait a people minute. lose their pensions too? The, a lot, a lot of people. Lose. Yes, all that happened. But listen. That's nice. We lost $10 billion on the, um, on the GM deal. That's correct. But in the $241 billion bailout that we did to the banks and everything else, we made $10 billion. So we broke completely even. Oh, right. Three or 400,000 jobs in the auto industry were saved, including the windshield wiper manufacturers and the seatbelt guys and all that kind of stuff. And I look at that and I think, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. You know, it's like that, that worked out. And it saved but a lot of jobs too, I heard. Yeah, what would have happened? They would have gone bankrupt, and a Japanese company or a Chinese company or something would have bought them, and um, the same thing would have happened. People would have lost their pensions and everything else. Who and wanted, by the way, there's who a, wanted them there's to go a, out of business? Do you remember? You know, there were a lot of people. Romney? A lot of people. Uh, also, if you'll remember when um, when Wall Street crashed, and they said, you know, too bad, and then when they saw what was going to happen, thousands of people just pouring into the streets uh, out of work all over town, uh, they were watching on television. They said, oh, we can't have this. And so it would it would have been utter chaos. It would have leveled itself. And would, But there are a lot of people that went, fuck them, you know, too bad. Let them go bankrupt. And then there is a, um, well, how do you pronounce his name? It's, it's K-E-Y-N-E-S. That's the economist who many, many years ago, I want to, maybe in the early 1900s Penis? or whatever. Key, it's either Keys or Keynes or whatever. He's the one that his philosophy was from many, many years ago that in a crisis, uh, the government needs to print money and to help, uh, to prop up, you know, the failure of, of the, uh, economic, um, uh, status, right? Mm -hmm. And now, of course, conservatives do not believe in that, and that's fine. That's fine. But when you see what happens with austerity, you, you lose all your shit, right? And everybody gets really pissed off, and there riots in the streets and everything else. And so then they printed money, and um, we went into terrible debt. There's no doubt about that. But but that's what Barack Obama and his team believe in. That's not what Mitt Romney and a lot of people believe in, Rand Paul and everybody else. I say that the same people that support them, once all their shit is cut, will get very upset. Very upset. By the way, when's the last time you told your daughter she couldn't have something that she really wanted? Remember, because you didn't have the money. Oh, all the time. God, you're not getting that. What happens? I want it. 
Oh, no. <laughs> well, you can't have it. I'm daddy's What broke. happens, Garrett, when, when you, you know, get your check or something and, you know, it's not the same as it was or the government's taking money or some shit? You go crazy. Everybody goes nuts. Yeah. If you do austerity, you know, if you, you go, okay, you know, here we go. Oh, my God. You know, look, let my kids, let, let the economy be on Kate and on my kids' shoulders. It's fine. They'll be all right. They'll figure it out. Let each generation figure it out. That's all. Christina, when you're told no, what do you do? When someone says, no, you can't have that. Mm, depends. If I can mm -hmm. make myself have it, I still have it. Do you cry? Really? Well, I used to. I mean, I, I was an only child, so I was used to getting my way my whole life. Do you go into Just debt like to get baby. something you want? No, you never. Want something? No, 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 no. You don't go into debt? No, no, Good no. for you. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm, I'm just right. poor. There's no, I'm already mm -hmm. in debt and not trying to be. Yeah. Let's go to Jay of Canada. Hello, Jay. It's Jay Thomas. How are you? Hey, Jay. How's it going? Good. Great show. Good to be back. I, I'm really glad you guys are back. Uh, the, the, the replays were cool, but to hear mm -hmm. everyone together mm -hmm. in there, and it's, it's just a great feeling. Um, well, isn't that nice? Thank it. you very much. Yeah. Okay. I was calling just to correct, not so much correct, but the way that the woman was describing how to say, I want to eat your pussy. That was kind of the phonetic, proper English, if you were to say a sentence. The slang way to do that is if you take your left hand, your thumb and your forefinger, and pinch mm -hmm. the bottom of your lip, and then you get your right hand, and you get You your take your thumb finger. and your forefinger, and you yeah. pinch the bottom yeah. of your lip. Okay, I'm yeah. doing that. And now you take and your other what? hand and uh -huh. the thumb and forefinger and pinch the top of your lip. Right. Okay. <laughs> now you pull them apart and flick your tongue out. Like that? And that means lick my lesbian pussy? You point at the person, you pinch your lips, you stretch them up and down as far as you can stretch them, uh -huh. and then flick yes. your tongue out. Wow. <laughs> you know what that sounds like, Garrett? That sounds like 90 days in jail. That really does. That sounds like you could. You and that could means that sounds like I, you're killing a turkey. <laughs> what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get some uh, vagina. Yeah, yeah, the vagina. Well, you're, you're, you're requesting to eat the vagina. I'm trying to yeah. initiate cunnilingus. Mm -hmm. you no, know, no. You know, for you, since since the butthole is involved, you just purse your lips like you're gonna whistle. Like this. I'm gonna do the same thing here. You just go like that, and you you get the sphincter working. Uh, there you go. All right. Thank you very much. If the government yeah. ever ran their homes the way they run the government, uh, they'd be they'd be broken out of a house. It's ridiculous. All right, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the fun things to do is to hear the local announcers screaming and yelling when their team does well. And we will have the guy from Auburn who two weeks in a, in a row went so nuts, people thought he was going to drop dead on the year. Oh, my God, and, that's uh, great. And you know what? They're homers, you know. And, mm -hmm. and then you listen to the other guy. What's great about Sirius is, Kevin, is if I want to listen to the Saints, I can hear our local announcer. Right. Or if they're playing somebody else, I can hear someone else. Well, Same isn't thing it, with college isn't it like when, like when I listen to baseball on Sirius, if I if the Yankees are playing in Boston, I get the uh, the Boston feed. If they're in New York, I get the New York feed. You get. I both? wouldn't listen to that woman. The, the, the Yankee announcer both woman. For is, yeah. Okay, only one for the baseball. The Yankee announcer woman is the worst announcer. Oh, she the, is I mean, not. That's that's Susan. Susan I like Susan. Susan. Yeah. I like Susan. Oh my God, that's horrible. So we'll have him on, and of course they're going to be playing for uh, the national championship, and then we will extend. Our, our, now, are they playing for it. the national championship, the Auburn? Yeah. Now, uh, what uh, is that? The all Rose kind of crazy shit is happened. That the Rose Bowl? It was almost impossible. It was impossible. Uh, Ohio State hadn't lost in twenty-two or twenty-three games. Okay. They should have killed Michigan State. Michigan State upset them. Okay. Uh, Alabama got upset. So it was one of these oh. things where all, all of these things happened lined up. And Auburn, which is just like you know somebody you know. Put horseshoes up now. What do they call that bowl then? It's the BCS bowl, and it's not going to be there anymore. They're going to have the a BCS playoff bowl, right? So then we'll have uh, from um, the Bunny Ranch uh, the <laughs> girls at the Bunny Ranch. All the whores, uh, they are going to have Obamacare. And Dennis Hoff is a uh, conservative. Oh, and he's against it. God, he's I, against yeah, it. Yeah, I've, so I've, he will come on, and we'll have he the whore. He is such a blowhart, isn't he? We'll have Dennis the whore Hoff. pimp view. Of the affordable, 
The whore oh, of course horse. they are. Whores are for it. He's against it. Hey, you ever and known he, a whore that didn't want a fucking handout? He employs the whores, yes. But he doesn't provide yeah. health insurance for Not to the whore. Hi, are you a whore? Yes. Um, here, wow. let me just give you, let me just give you Sounds some, like some this. money for, yeah, let yes, me give you Daddy. some money for, yeah. Whores, whores all take everything. They, they want everything. But I he want has everything. Security. I want Obamacare. Daddy. All his other employees he has to now provide with health care. God yeah, damn exactly. it. Let's go to John of Las Vegas. Hello, John. Jay Thomas here. Go ahead. Hey, listen. My wife has been a flight attendant for an airline for 41 years, okay? Mm -hmm. And she was part of the Teamster Flight Attendant Union, and I was also part of the Teamster Pilot Union, which really has nothing to do with what I'm about to tell you. So my wife was a labor leader for the Flight Attendant Union. Now, about 10 years ago, they negotiated a defined benefit, right? The Teamsters mm -hmm. said, okay, it'll go back to your day to hire. And about seven right. years ago, the Teamsters went, oh, you know what? It's not for your day to hire. It's from the date the plan was implemented. Now, about two yeah, years they ago. Yeah, they always, they do pull kind of weird stuff sometimes. I know that. Two years ago, the Teamsters went, you know what? There's no money for your defined benefit program. Now, that probably has to be blamed on the airline because they weren't making the payments. So the team. So your wife doesn't have what? She doesn't have an, what a retirement? Is that it? Well, she does, but it's about five hundred dollars a month when it was supposed to have been a couple thousand. So she got fucked. Right. Yeah. Well. You know what? Here's the weird thing. You know, Kevin, we're lucky. We're in. A, we're in. Uh, we're in Equity uh, Screen Actors Guild and AFTRA. And I'm going to just tell you right now that, you know, um, my um, retirement, when I finally take it, you know, it could be like, you know, over a 100000 bucks a year because I've been in these unions for over 30 years and I, I worked all the way to the top level. And I'm always frightened that something's going to happen. But you know who keeps us going? You know, uh, all the big movie stars, Kevin, that make all that money. They, they're, they're one percent of, of their salary goes in and we've been, do you ever check, Kevin? I mean, I'm always nervous that we're gonna, that we're gonna have some crap happen to us, but we've been pretty, pretty lucky. But you know, um, what's sad is, is that I don't know, it's like, uh, retirement, it's supposed to be there for you and everything else, and then they get in a big battle with the airline and they, that's it. They, you, you, so your wife lost her retirement, right? Uh, let me just tell you something. Um, uh, mm -hmm. most of the air, the majority of the airlines at one time, the airline unions were very strong. Um, United, U.S. Air, and all, they all had defined benefits. Now, when these guys were going to retire, they were going to get damn near 100% of their salary, over $100,000 a year. Now, because they all defaulted and did not pay these defined benefit programs, they have mm -hmm. to get their retirement from the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is a government institution. That's an okay? insurance policy? Yeah. Right. So and That's 500 bucks. So, you know the guy that landed in the Hudson, Sully? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He lost his defined benefit. You know what he gets a month? About $2,500, as opposed to him getting damn near $100,000 a year. That's pretty fucked Hey, up. listen, it, it is, and, and I'm going to tell you something. It, these are these are tough times, and they're, they're as bad as 1929. And that started, when did it all crash? 2008? Something like that? Uh, 2008? 2005, it started to go downhill. This is what I heard back then. It will be 10 years before everything levels out, at least 10. So we're still a couple of years away. And I don't get, Garrett, do you know why the stock market goes up and yet everybody's still bitching they don't have jobs and there's no money and all that stuff? Do you know why the stock market goes up? I don't understand that at all, no. I, I, the only thing I can figure is, is that they're firing so many people and making people do four jobs that, that four people used to do that they're making <laughs> more profit and they're they're getting that's all i can figure that's what, yeah. cause, and i have a bunch of stock i have a ton of stock and so it's like i'm happy but i don't get it i don't understand it at all how about bernie madoff how about he took the blame for everything and now this guy is saying that everybody was in on it it's an you know those that testimony why would he take the, why would he take the blame for everybody if mm -hmm. everybody was in on it I mean, I remember you know, that five years there's ago. There's no way he wasn't going to get 150 years. Mm -hmm. So he just took the blame. That's it. He just took it. And I also think we had a guy on that said he thought he would be killed in prison, not from 
anybody in the United States. But remember, Bernie um, had offices in London and I think in Paris, and the Russian mob was in there somewhere. You don't have that kind of money without, and if you're going to Europe, without all of a sudden you get mm -hmm. the knock on the door. Valdis, you're doing very well. You're doing very well, Bernie. Okay. Sit down, Bernie. Have a vodka. Have a vodka, Bernie. Sit down, have a vodka. No, Bernie, sit down. Sit yeah. down, Bernie. Have a vodka. Okay. What? I was sitting around a discussion of retirement plans. And this All right, we're done happened. with you. We're, no, 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 wait, wait. Just last thing. <laughs> no, what is it? Oh, it'll doing? take a You're second. Boring. You're no, boring. No, it's not. And this guy said, he uh, asked us our party affiliation. Some guy said Republican. Uh, and you know what this guy said? What? You aren't no. rich enough to be a Republican. You don't have a net worth of over thirty million dollars. I thought that All was right. pretty good. That's good. Bye. Thank you, John of Las Vegas. Let's go to Matthew who's in Long Island. Yes, Matthew, go ahead. Hey, what how is, you doing, Jay? What do you want? Sit down. Um basically the reason why the stock market is rocking and everybody's broke right. is yeah. because the Fed is pumping eighty five billion dollars a month into the stock market called quantitative easing. Now, is that part of the – what's the guy, K-E-Y-N-E-S? How do you pronounce that? That's the that's the theorist. Keenest. Keynesian, something like that. Kins, it's Keynesian, right? Yeah, it's Keynesian. And so that's part of his deal also. You just prop everything up, right? You just print money and everything else, right? Well, they're printing it like it's going out of business, and we're going to see They've that. They've always printed cool. money every month. They're printing a lot more. How many? $85 billion a month? $85 billion a month, and they've been doing it for – it's got to be like – a bunch of quarters in a row. I mean, when, when do, if they stop, what happens? We all it's over. No, well, you know the stock market will tank. What do you do for a living? Thing. I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best. <laughs> so the I love it. You, you, do, do, do you ever put a wow. Do you ever put a, a screwdriver in the crack of your ass when you're under there working? No, I wear suspenders. Real plumbers wear suspenders. All right. All okay. right. You wear well, those, thank you Duluth, very much. Uh, those Duluth uh, underpants. Uh, dear Jay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, this goes to Jay Thomas Show at Gmail. Dear Jay, why do people in New Orleans hate the former mayor, Ray Nagin? He was praised during Hurricane Katrina. He mm -hmm. told the president to get his ass down there. Yeah. And now um, I'm seeing him as a derogatory float. During all the Mardi Gras parades and everything else, this comes from Mickey. Well, I believe he's going to jail. Uh, oh Mickey. no, kidding. What, yeah, I think uh, they're talking about putting him in jail. What, what did he uh, do? That he, would, he uh, and he his was... family owned uh, some construction, or they owned a countertop. But he was or beloved, something. wasn't he, in New Orleans? What What he was was he was very uh, plain spoken, and mm -hmm. people did yeah. like him in the beginning. Right. And and uh, he was elected. I, over, I liked uh, him. Yeah. yeah, and 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 he and uh, he also had a majority of white people that voted for him and sure. got him in. And he had defeated our current uh, mayor now, uh, uh, Landrew. And the weird thing was is that when they get in there, um, they start fooling around. Uh, we had another guy that was going to run for mayor. Now, listen to this one. Well, this it is, is so a weird. very corrupt city, you know, so it's, there's a lot of they temptation there, you know. The guy's name was, last name was Thomas. They loved him. They got him for taking, a, like, over a period of years for parking lots, $25,000. And he went to jail for four years, and he's, I'm sure he's out now. But doesn't that sound like, like peanuts? You yeah, know, yeah. to be 25 yeah. grand. 25 grand. He was going to be the mayor. He was going to be the mayor. It was over like, you know, you know, five or six years or whatever. It was peanuts. And so, yeah, there's a lot of stupid, but Ray Nagin may, may go to jail. Um, I, I don't know if they've indicted him or they're investigating him. He would him be on all whatever. the news shows and, you know, everybody very, to know Very his plain opinion. spoken. Yeah. Here's what I love like about like a Cory Booker, you know, like uh, it reminded me a little bit of Cory Booker. And Cory Booker is now, uh, is he gay, is he straight? That's well, he's not. He's the he's, uh, I, I, I would think that he was gay, you know. But, uh, you would. Yeah, absolutely. But, it's okay. You know, but that's not up, you know, it's up to him. You know, people used to say that right. about me all the time. And I go, hey, I'm not gay. You're gay. How sure. about that? God, all right. how dare you? Well, stay where you are. Uh, we're still here, and uh, we'll take a couple of minutes off and be right back. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Dirty Sons with Kristen. I have a fabulous new phrase for you tonight. We're going to learn how to say cum dumpster. Isn't that fabulous? All right, let's get started. My approximation of this phrase in sign language is actually going to be semen trash can. 
uh, it's as close as I know, so let's get started. Um, semen is actually kind of complicated. You're going to do this. So one hand pulls out from the chest, points to the other wrist, and then it spreads out. Um, and then trash can is also kind of complicated, too. You're going to pull out from underneath your chin, and then uh, C comes down on your other hand's open palm. So we're going to put it together now and say semen trash can. Hooray! Have a great night, folks. The Jay Thomas Show. They have spent untold amounts of money to bring the top-notch entertainment to Sirius XM. Jay Thomas. After you. Indeed. Sirius XM 104. A lot of people sent me the, the Nelson Mandela uh, uh, story and, and, and the, the, the rubbish hand moves and all that. A woman named Kathy N. sent me uh, one, a, bit, a listener. And at the end of her um, email, she has, and, and people do this all the time, they have these sayings, you know, um, a flower, a rainbow, a tree, a dog, a blade of grass, a human body, when broken down to their essential components, all are just energy and information. Deepak Chopra. And then she has another one. When you walk across the fields with your mind pure and holy, then from all the stones and all the growing things and all the animals, the sparks of their soul come out and cling to you, and then they're purified and become a holy fire inside of you, an old Hasidic saying. i got to tell you something, Kathy, and I say this to everybody that has stuff. People hate that shit, okay? Sayings at the bottom of your email. And, and by the way, Deepak Chopra is a rich bullshit artist. Okay? But his show here at Sirius is... Amazing. Wonderful. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Most of, and the old Hasidic guy that, that also has a show. Yes. The rabbi. Um, he's the rabbi. Shmuley. You were speaking about golf radio yesterday and the new golf coach that has a show here on the PGA. Channel. Fantastic. That's going to be a good really? one. Yeah. yeah. Not like the other ones you were talking not about. Not like TK's. Uh, TK's golf, golf show. show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my guy. My buddy. <laughs> That's not. Nobody wants to listen to that. That's all he wants to I talk know. about, you know. Not the golf show. I'm um, serious. That's thank you, else. Garrett, very much. You're right. You know what? Let me. Let me. I'm. I'm actually going to frame it, Kathy. I'm framing <laughs> it. Thanks. Let's go to Brian of Belmar. Where is Belmar? You mean is that in California? Mm -hmm. Belmar, like yeah. New Jersey, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, wait, you said you had a what? It's, it's both. In California. It's, California. it's everywhere. It's near the racetrack, it's near Belmont, and it's near Mar something or other. That's cool. Yeah, that, no, uh, down near uh, La Jolla. Okay, cool. What a beautiful area to live in. That's uh, that's uh, You must be very wealthy. I used to call it La Jolla. I mean, how do you live? I mean, it's not cheap where you live. Can no. you see the ocean from your home? I can actually see four Bentleys from where I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm oh, my God. Wow. Right wow. I love you. I'm not one of them. Believe I know you're not. You're parking them, but that's okay. Welcome yeah. to the show. Uh, Brian, come on in. What can we do for you? On um, the Stern Show, they had John Goodman and uh, he, yeah. you. he said that you guys worked together on Chud. I was wondering what you thought about him or if you heard the interview. I've known John since I moved to New York and since he moved from St. Louis and I moved uh, from North Carolina and we were with maybe the same agency and we would see each other at auditions. So I've known John Goodman. Uh, since the late 70s. He's he a wonderful guy. Uh, he wasn't originally from New Orleans, Jay? No, no, no. Oh, he um, he went Louis. down there, okay. and, and uh, if you're a drinker, and if you do drugs and you like to hang out, there's no better place to go visit. Maybe that's now, I why I a... like New Orleans. Yeah, it's a fun, it's, it, you oh, know, I mean. God, it's the greatest. I mean, I, I was outside of my uh, hotel once, and these two women were sitting drunk as, as can be mm -hmm. with their makeup running and everything else, and they were going, oh, man, we got to move here. And I'm thinking, that's just what we need, two fucking, you know, new drunks. So John went down there, and he would stay. I guess he did some movies and stuff. And he would stay at the Five Star uh, Hotel. And I believe the woman that he's married to now uh, was at the front desk. Okay. And she was from Natchitoches, Louisiana. And I think they moved there for a while. But then John, uh, uh, that's a couple of kids and all. And he moved his family and he has a fabulous, uh, fishing camp and all. But John's like a regular guy down there. Nobody bothers you. And he invested in some bars and some restaurants, which he probably shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. And then one day, he's got this incredible fishing camp. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, in a place called the Rigolese, which is R-I-G, 
um, A L E T S, I think it's, it's pronounced Wrigley's, whatever. Now, Kevin, this is hard to believe, but there are probably two or three million dollars worth of these fishing camps circling this 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 island, and everybody has their boats tied up. And some of the houses are fifty grand. John was probably five hundred thousand. And then you get in the boat, and within a matter of minutes, you're in the greatest fishing in the world. Some guy is it saltwater fishing or uh, uh, it's brackish when you start brackish, out in the okay. Gulf of Mexico yeah. is salt and then it's brackish on the inside and everything else. Okay. And what kind so of John fish do you Goodman, pull out of there? Uh, speckled trout is a, is a, the the and they, which they don't really serve in restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, red fish is the best eating fish, mm -hmm. the most fun to catch. Yeah. Um, and then you know mackerel, everything else. It's 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 the mo if you if you don't catch a fish in five minutes, you move on. There's no. I, like, I am a fisherman think. though, so I I do want to well, let you know that. I did a TV show down there once, and the guy, the producer, did not want to go in the boat and didn't want to shoot fishing. I said, I'm telling you, man, it's it's a part of my life, and we'll do it. So, okay, we get out in the boat. Well, of course, we are slamming these fish in about five minutes. And where are we parked? Right near an old Spanish fort in the middle of the swamp. They would, they would take these soldiers, these Spanish soldiers or French soldiers or whatever, with the helmets and all the stuff, yeah. they would sail them out. To the marsh, and when I say a fort, a fort as big as the studio you're in, but maybe two or three stories high because they could see the, you know, so they could, uh, you know, see the enemy, right? Yeah. And they would deposit two guys there, mosquitoes, you know, alligators, every, and they would just deposit them in the swamp. Or in the marsh. And what would they and do? So what do you we, mean they'd put, the they would look out. They would look. Oh, they would look okay. for whatever. They and they would stay there for a couple, two, three weeks. I guess I don't know. So those forts are still out there, and you can catch fish. Now this producer guy, we gave him a fishing pole. We couldn't get him to leave. We said, you know, come on, we got to go. No, no, it's 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 exciting. So John yeah. Goodman's got this great house, and other people do. Some guy finds out. And people do this all the time in Louisiana, maybe other places. He finds out that this entire area was owned by someone uh, whom, 90 years ago or whatever, and they didn't pay their taxes or something, and it was in total arrears. Oh, I like the that. the state government, this the state good. government. Good story. The state government had taken this land back. This guy pays whatever the, the freight is. It might yeah. might have been 500000 or whatever. And now he owns it, and he sends a letter to everyone that if you want to continue living here, I'm going to charge each one of you whatever, some huge amount of money. He evicted everyone. No. And and took over their homes. Yes. Are you serious? And John Goodman over? lost everybody's home. How many homes uh, did? A lot. I'm telling you, like, it's got to be. In this area, it's like a little island, you know. It's yeah. got to be 25 or 30. I'm telling you right now. Oh, my oh, no. God. What a great story. I, and it's happened before. I know guys that drove by uh, empty lots for years. This is not a very popular and, guy now, is he, that took over this, uh, took their homes? How could they take John Goodman's house? I mean, you know, didn't he buy the land? Or I don't get it. Yeah, well, you know what? And, and the, the sad thing is, is that, that's Louisiana. Now, maybe things have changed now. Now, when the storm came, all those homes were wiped away. But people have rebuilt and everything else. But that's the, the sad story I remember. They're so always John rebuilding, got, aren't they? Now, we're going to rebuild. A, on a, yeah, but he's a great guy. Oh, yeah. And we've worked it. We did plays together, and we did that one movie together. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good guy. He's had his demons and everything else. His wife is lovely. And um, so that's that, you know. But he's, he's really a nice fellow. Yeah, he had great things to say about you. He's a huge Stern fan. I bet you could probably get him on your show. Well, how about yesterday when Artie said that he copied my um, storytelling style? Yeah. i got to tell you something. A friend of mine called me and said, God forbid. I go, yeah, how come I'm not making fucking 80 grand a weekend, Garrett? I don't know. I'm well, you have to go You're out there. Stand up. You're not going out there. You know, I'm too. I'm I'm too nervous that I, you know, that I'll forget my act. Why Why don't you and I go out together? You know, we'll go out together and do shows. <laughs> but you know what? I don't have an act. But you're a storyteller. You're not. It's not exactly. even stand up. Yeah. So yeah. what you're doing you don't, right now? Yeah, you don't need an act. You we just can go start down and then talk. all four of us. We could go down mm -hmm. to like a little place in Flat Rock, North Carolina. They have these little theaters there. We could test so it go out there. There are a ton of people in this city. Recently. Recently, we can do it in New York. Some, I decided to get some plastic surgery. 
And a lot of people say, oh, you're not supposed to talk about it. But I decided a buddy of mine uh, is a doctor. This is what the story I would tell. I said, no jokes. And right, he said, yeah, you know, you've helped me out at the at the, at the charity and all. If you ever need me. So I said, well, yeah, I'll take some. I'll, uh, so he puts my face up on the video and shows me my my chicken meat under my skin and my mm -hmm. bags. And he <laughs> says, this is what. And then he types up and he, and he cleans your face up on the screen. And, and you look like a new person. Have you done this with a plastic surgeon? No, not they yet. Do? They show you what you're going to look new like. face. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. Well, I couldn't believe it. My wife said, do not get plastic surgery. And uh, she loves the guy and everything else, but do not do this. Don't do it. You don't need it. Don't do it. You don't know what's going what's to happen. So I called him up and I said, you know, she doesn't want me to do it. He says, look, I'm only going to let you. You're just going to give the nurses their money. You know, like, I'll just make you pay for the nurses. I'll just, I'll just work you in. He says, and look, you know, you'll heal like in a week or ten days. It'll be great. So I drive to L.A. He's like a drug and I get, this guy. I get secret plastic surgery, right? And I tell I told that story, Garrett, the night that I was with him. But it takes forever to get the fucking story out, and then the red light goes on. You know, listen. So many podcasts right now do live shows where they just yeah. do their podcasts in front of an audience, and people pay. You know, oh my god, they, yeah. people see a thousand people. Oh, and there's a ton really? of people yeah. in this city doing storytelling every night. Nobody gives a well, shit about you know them. What? You're Jay Thomas. This is, this like, is going to start with my with my big birthday bash. Nice. Let's let Howard's yeah, go by. Right. Let's let the you know what? We're let's let it calm get, down. We're invited to it. And then in July, then in July, we'll find the sleaziest place we can find <laughs> for the J. Thomas, the Howard Johnsons uh, in Times Square. You have to pay for everything. That's All hilarious. the guests that come, hey, hey, you pay for me and everybody. By the way, Brian, you'll put your yeah. credit card uh, at with the bartender as you hey, enter. Hey, okay. hey, hey, You're gone. Go. Goodbye, Brian. I see you later. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor so, Brian. Jay Thomas Show. We're so lonely and bored here. <laughs> the Jay Thomas Show. Jay. Afternoons. On Indy. Sirius XM 104. All right, here we go. Fourth and 18 for the Tigers. Here's your ball game. Nick Marshall stands in, steps up. He's got to throw down field. Just a home run ball, and uh, it is tipped off. And Lewis got it on the deflection. Lewis is going to score. Lewis is going to score. Lewis is going to score. Touchdown, over. Touchdown, over. A miracle in Jordan Hare. A miracle in Jordan Hare. 73 yards. And the Tigers, with 25 seconds to go, lead 43 to 38. Rod Bramblett, welcome to Jay Thomas Show. How are you? Doing great. How are you, Jay? What I love about you, know, I started as a high school football announcer in Jacksonville. Um, uh, with with uh, um, with Dan Patrick, uh, we did some stuff, and I and I did UNCC basketball with a guy named John Kilgo out of Charlotte. I don't know if you know John or not, but um, what I remember is is you're just sitting there, and you don't think anything's going to happen, and it's almost like uh, someone hits you with a cattle prod, right? And you're you know it's your team. I mean you're a homer and all that stuff, but I I. I absolutely love it, and we don't see that, you know, on a national broadcast because they have to stay calm and all that, and they can't. Um, do you uh, do you ever worry about your heart? Because uh, well, I'm going to run another one in a minute too. Do you ever worry about your heart going at the, you know? Well, I, t I tell you, uh, the way this season has gone for all in the last couple of weeks, I, I made sure I had uh, I got a prescription for uh, for the SEC championship <laughs> game this past Saturday. It's it, it has really been incredible that Auburn had oh, two no. games. That, yeah. that, that, that finished the way they finished the last two weeks. Well, the other thing is, this is a first year coach. Um, uh, how do you say his name again? The, the, first, the new Malzahn. coach. Malzahn. Where was he before? He was, uh, he was head coach at Arkansas State for a year. Uh, but prior uh -huh. to that, he was Auburn's offensive coordinator for their 2010 national championship. So he's very familiar with the program. So it's the players from the other coach that he just coached better. Well, you know, that's interesting too. He was only gone a year. Um, oh. so many of these guys, he already knew. So I think that helped the learning curve a, a great deal for mm -hmm. this team. So there you are in the, in the, and of course it's always fun and, and it's a rule, I guess you have to run the local announcer, but they ran you on ESPN and, and everywhere else. And, and, um, uh, the only exciting, uh, we played NC State and we beat them at the buzzer and they ran that promo of me for, you know, the whole year of me <laughs> screaming and yelling and the ball was rolling around the rim and finally went in. 
it is crazy. And then every every radio station, every morning show plays you, right, Rod? Yeah, you know it's it's uh, it's neat. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, as the, and, and you know, Jay. I mean, you've done it before, obviously, uh, and you've mentioned it. If if you're a national guy, you're supposed to be middle of the road. But you yeah. know what? When you're not, you you know who your listening audience is, and they want to know that you're living sure. and dying with every every good and bad thing that happens. Well, you know, uh, I feel as though the announcers on on the national games have taken it, and of course they're being told to. They've taken it to such a uh, a middling level that you know even when something is exciting they 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 keep it under wraps that's why you know here it's serious which is fun we can listen to the home team or the opposing team and i and i'm a saints fan so i will listen sometimes to the to the serious to the to our local broadcast and i love you know the southern accents and then i turn back to the national broadcast and it's you know it's 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 boring, you know. Now let's play. This was a crazy one, and um, I'm going to ask you this question: uh, When a, a field goal is missed, I don't think a lot of players and maybe some coaches knew. You see, an extra point cannot be returned. Is that correct? Is that in correct. college and pros, or is it correct? Extra point cannot be returned, but a field goal missed if it comes up short, as long as it's fielded in the air. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want to with it. Not a lot of people. Now, did know you that, did you right? did you did you know that before? Yeah, I, you know it's interesting. Uh, Malzahn had called a timeout, and they had somebody different in the end zone uh, waiting for that kick. So they swapped the guys. They put in this Chris Davis kid, who was Auburn's punt returner, and he's already returned a punt for a touchdown this year. So it was a pretty smart coaching move on 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 Gus Malzahn's part. So what it looked like for those of you that maybe didn't see the game or don't or aren't as interested in SEC football as, as I am and and, and Rod uh, Bramblett is, um, it was the uh, going to be an over it was going to go to overtime, right? And it was for the basically to, you know the SEC championship, and it's Alabama and they were going for some fifty-seven yard uh, field goal. I don't think the Alabama kids uh, knew the rule. Well, uh, they certainly didn't cover it like you're supposed to but it is so i mean it is it is so unusual i've never seen it yeah. before and you probably can tell that when you hear the call i've never yeah. seen that happen before <laughs> now now gary danielson was on the national feed and so after it happened and uh this the davis kid runs the 110 yard touchdown or whatever he says well alabama didn't have a chance they had their fat team out there did you hear that uh, yeah, had a bunch of fat guys, which is what you normally have when you're. Well, but you know what? Goal. In the room I was sitting in, people were going, "Oh my God, he's going to get in trouble!" And I thought, "Why? That's funny. That's that. You know, <laughs> they're all big, three hundred pound guys. They're, they're blocking the kick." But he said, "But you know, and I don't guess he got in trouble or whatever." But he said, uh, "All the fat ones are out there." So this is um, uh, probably the ball's going to either go through or it's going to fall into the end zone, and then you're going to go to this overtime thing. This is Rod Bramblett from uh, this is two weeks in a row from Auburn University. Uh, when this guy returns it 110 yards to win the SEC championship. Go ahead, play it. Well, I guess if this thing comes up short, he can field it and run it out. All right, here we go. 56 yarder. It's got, no, does not have the leg. And Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. Here we go. There goes Davis. Oh, my God. Davis is going to run it all the way back. <laughs> Auburn's going to win the football game. Auburn's going to win the football game. He ran the midfield goal back. He ran it back 109 yards. They're not going to keep him off the field tonight. Holy cow. Oh, my God. Auburn wins. Auburn has won the Iron Bowl. Auburn has won the Iron Bowl in the most unbelievable fashion you will ever see. I cannot believe it. 34, 28. And we thought a miracle that Jordan Hare was amazing. Oh, my Lord in heaven. Chris Davis, 109 yards. And Auburn is going to the championship game. Wow. That now, Brian. Can I interject something here? The guy yeah. who is chuckling and saying, oh, oh, the first, oh, my God, is my color partner, former uh, Auburn quarterback Stan White, who still owns a ton of records here. And, uh -huh. and what people don't know, 
our engineer cut his mic off after the first oh my god and you can still hear him on the broadcast even though his microphone's off Pretty did they lazy. cut it off because they thought he was going to say holy shit or something? <laughs> well, I think they, they cut it off because they knew I was sitting there trying to describe what was happening. And they wanted to make sure he, did, he just didn't completely lose it. But let me tell well, you. you did. You you lost yeah. it for both of them. The, yeah. the, booth, the booth was chaos. And, uh, you know, high fives, hugs. Uh, it just also, I mean, just... Eh. It's a moment I will never ever forget, and, and and folks have to realize. I'm sure a lot of your listeners don't don't necessarily follow college football, but this is Auburn and Alabama. This is the, yeah. one of the most hated rivalries in the country, and it was one versus four, and there was so much on the line for it to end that way. The stadium just went nuts. I mean, the field was covered with fans, and you never see that at Auburn, but you saw it that yeah. night. You know it's funny, and um, you know we were we, we were uncensored. We, you know, not the sports channels, but we can say you know we can curse or whatever. And people always said to me, because um, you know I curse off the air and, and all that. But if I go on a national TV show or if I became a sports announcer again, I don't know how you do it, but you just the curse words don't even come out. But if you're home, of course, you're saying holy shit, oh no, you know or whatever. Have you ever slipped on the air? Has anything ever a damn or a hell or anything ever come out? Never. Never once, which is a miracle because you're right. When you're dealing with moments like this and emotions like this, uh, it's pretty amazing. But uh, I can say it's, I've never even come close. Maybe in my head, yes, but never, never come close to letting. I never out. came close on terrestrial radio. I never on the air. I never made a mistake. Um, uh, nothing. I, I, you know. Now, now, Kevin, let me let me just say to, to Kevin Meany, let me tell you about this Auburn Alabama uh, uh, rivalry. Some crazy guy. I guess he was an was he a, he was an Alabama fan. Right, right. Wasn't there a three hundred year old tree? Oh, I remember was, this. Uh, this was last year. There was a big story about a this. couple of years ago. Rod, tell us what this crazy guy did, who was from Alabama, uh, an Alabama fan, football fan, and hated Auburn. Tell us that well, that crazy. Yeah, he went, uh, went to jail. Uh, just, a, just a quick background, and it happened after the two thousand ten season. Auburn trailed at Alabama 24 to nothing, came back with Cam Newton as quarterback, won that football game, and they, the biggest comeback ever in the, in, in the rivalry. So mm -hmm. Auburn goes on, they win a national championship. This Alabama fan, bless his heart, and I mean, just obviously off kilter, sneaks into <laughs> Auburn and, and poisons these two old oak trees. And, and the significance of the oak trees, they're at a place called Tumor's Corner. And after every win, whether it be football, basketball, tiddlywinks, it doesn't matter, the students and the fans go and roll Tumor's Corner, roll those trees. They've been doing it for years. What, what, is, what is roll a tree? What does toilet, that mean? Toilet tissue. Oh, toilet okay. Tissue. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah roll, roll it. Yeah. paper. Yeah. Well, this guy comes in and kills him. And it took a year or so for him to finally just completely die out and um, you know, that's did, how, did they that's know? Did they know right away they were poisoned, or did they think they, that the arborists come in and go, "It's a fungus or something"? Or the guy called into a radio show. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, uh, that's he, right, he, and said he poisoned the trees. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's uh he's no longer in the state, and I think he's been banned from going to Auburn or Alabama football. And those which, trees had to be taken down. They had to be cut down. Ripped. Yeah, ripped up, tore up, and uh, now they're planning to put some... And he wasn't put there. in jail, or he wasn't prosecuted? You know, he was in jail for a little while. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I can't tell you for sure what the final outcome was, but uh, he is no longer around these parts. I know that. You know what? Oh, he was just, banned. That's a, that's a shame. No, it was... It's like the old, like the old West. He was banned from the state. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, now, um, weren't they a couple hundred years old? Weren't yeah, they, they were old. Yeah, crazy. very, very old. And rare you know, trees too. These types of oaks normally don't grow uh, this far north. Not that we're really far north here, but normally they're mm -hmm. closer to the Gulf Coast and, and that type of climate. So they were very hard to. But they all the gnarly there. tree. They were all you know, yeah, kind of like yeah. New Orleans trees. I like those trees down there. Not not quite that big, but yeah. that same type. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, Rod uh, Bramblett, who all of you know from from Auburn football, I am uh, such a fan of local announcers, and um, that is such uh, a great we, uh, when you, when you hear him just call that uh, that that play because it's that a run. shock. 
It's you're shock, in shock. You it's like you're going, well, it's two seconds. He He's like, oh, my nothing's God. Gonna, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like Kramer. You know, it's like you go yeah. from standstill to, you know, the hair's right when everything else. I mean, it's uh, and, and have you ever lost your voice? Have you ever hurt your voice? Doing that? You know, nothing nothing that was long standing, but uh I tell you after the, the Georgia game, which was the first call you played, uh it was probably a little worse after that game than, than the Alabama game. But yeah, you know, it's it's been close. A little it's warm close. salt water, a yeah. little gargling. There mm -hmm. you go, there you go. But uh, so far so good and, and uh mm -hmm. you know, now Auburn's getting to play for another national championship, uh, I guess Florida State here in uh, January yeah. sixth. So Actually, now you get to call. Now, now you get to call the local um, of that one. Correct. Correct. Okay. Both, good. Both, both sides get their local announcers. Then, of course, you get uh, okay. the ESPN broadcast as well. Well, um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of SEC football. I'm from from New Orleans. You know, I'm a big LSU fan and everything else. And I'm pulling for Auburn. But but Rod, I absolutely love uh, hearing those calls, and that's why I like to listen to the. For the different sides, uh, Rod Bramblett from Auburn. Uh, good luck in the national championship. And when is that? Like January the fifth or something like that? Jan January sixth out in Pasadena, out in the Rose Bowl. So looking forward to. Garrett, we, do that we one carry one the game on, on Serious? I think NCAA I believe we carry we the game. Play all the other college games. So yeah. Yeah, I believe we carry the games here. Rod, it was uh, fun to talk to you. Fun to meet you, and and I, I I love the calls. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for having me on, guys. Take care. Oh no, it was great. It was great. Great. You know, Kevin, that's just kind of a thing. I don't know. It's almost like as, you know, you'd bring a comic on that you love or whatever. I just love the, um, and I, you know, I, I, I were so excited always... talking to him and, and, and it really was just a unbelievable, you know, you know, when you, when you see something that historic and the, for the announcer to be that pumped up about it, you know, if you were announcing your daughter's sure. soccer game and, 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 well, that would never boring. happen, you know, because but, uh, but she that's, doesn't yeah, play it soccer. Might. You well, know. whatever. You're there announcing it, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she kicks the ball in the goal and wins the game. It's that kind of like, yeah. oh my, you know, it's just, you know, for me though. Oh, it's I funny, understand um, it. I totally understand it. I'm, yeah, I, I, I loved, I love stand up and I love acting and and I always want to do that. But I'll tell you, I started as an announcer, and I absolutely love announcers and they're unsung heroes also because I'll listen to high school announcers. Um, you know, years ago, Garrett, I mentioned that I went to uh, Topeka, Kansas, or whatever, and and, and was uh, doing something there, and I got a sandwich and a and a soda. And they made fun of me for this when I first got the series. And I watched uh, a little league football practice. You know, and of course they're all calling up and saying, you know, I'm gay and I'm looking at kids and all that other stuff. But that's how much I love football. I mean, I could just watch practice. I go to the games early if I'm going to go and watch them warm up and everything else. And I love the announcers. We have a guy uh, on the Saints. His name is um, Hokey Gaijon. And he was a fullback for the Saints. And he played maybe at LSU or whatever. And Hokey Gaijon is unbelievable. And so, and we have the, uh, the, the you know, the Cajun Cannon. Um, you know, um, God, what's his, what's his, his wife? We've had him on the show and all. The uh, Cajun Cannon? Bobby A. Bear. Bobby Abear, who's got a French accent also, and he played for Atlanta and everything else. And, I mean, it's like old home week down there, you know. And, by the way, the local announcers, Kevin, will sometimes say things that are detrimental to their own team mm -hmm. that the national announcers will never say. They have really sanitized, uh, you know, ESPN and all that. It's just, it's, it's to the point of, like, it's, it's hard to listen. Well, I, I like listening to, uh, uh, the radio, you know, when I listen to sports, especially baseball, you know, I'll have it on in the background. Yeah. I always Cause have because you, you imagine it more. And and I do like, you know, and and I've worked with Harry Carey before, and uh, this is where we are. The Cubs, and he's drunk and he's wild, and passionate, and and they never fired him. No. Then you would go out and have drinks with them afterwards down at Harry Carey's. Come on, come on, everybody. Ah. I think baseball is the only sport where the local announcers go to the end of the season, at least on radio. What do you mean? What do you mean? Once it gets to the playoffs, then, like, the national oh, NBC okay. picks it up, like the Rangers. Not on radio. Not no, on radio. Uh, yeah, radio is different. You're right. Yeah, so yeah. he probably still did the radio thing. Yeah. Now, like John Sterling, you can always hear him, you know, yeah. uh, 
you know, do the do the radio play, you know, which I which I, I love listening to the radio, you know, sports and football games. I've listened on radio before, and they're very exciting. Yeah. Well, one day, Mike, for years, I've listened to sports on the radio when my kids were little. Let's say we're driving somewhere. I would yeah. put on a, a football game, and my kids would always go, "How can you listen to a football game?" And I said, because I can envision, you said it yourself, I can envision the field and the players. And I love when the announcer goes, and uh, the Tigers will be going from left to right as I'm watching the field right now. They're in their, they're, you know, they're in their Auburn, they're, they're, they're in their crimson and gold helmets along with the, uh, with the gold piping running down the sides. I mean, I can, I can feel it all, right? They describe the uniform and everything else. And I can see the whole field in my head. And I, I think, I think kids have missed out on that. The, the, like the theater of the mind, you know, everything is totally visual, you know, uh, for, for them. But I can, you know, I, and I can enjoy, I've, I've been yelling and screaming in the car, you know, for two hours listening to a football game, you know. Um, now, now Garrett, are the local Jets announcers on the radio, are they fun to listen to? Um, you ever heard them? Yeah, I've heard them. It's like, uh, Greg Buttle. A former linebacker mm -hmm. for the Jets, mm -hmm. and usually Ian Eagle or um, they might. Ian Eagle, that's his name. Ian Eagle. He does the he does the TV now, mm -hmm. so maybe he doesn't. That's do a cool it name. Yeah, Ian Eagle. I love that one. Well, so. him and Dan right. Deardorff do it together, and they call it the Bird and the Beard because it's Ian Eagle and Dan Deardorff or uh, oh, Dan Fouts. I'm sorry, has the Dan beard. Fouts. Yeah. Jay, uh, Jay, we worked with Dan Fouts, remember, out in Santa Fe? Yeah, and his wife and all she yeah, took all Jerry, stuff Jerry together. Burbank, right? That was her name, Jerry Burbank. And Yeah, and that, even Dan Fouts, when you're listening to the national broadcast, you know, he's just so pablum. You know, they don't, it's it's weird. It, it, everybody that announces him. He's such a great guy, though. I like him. Yeah, wonderful, Fouts, but yeah. everybody on national TV just sounds like they're doing everything to protect their job. Well, that's what ha that's you what's know. happened with broadcasting in general is the homogenization of uh, yeah. Of broad you know everybody sounds you know you used to be able to you talked about this yesterday where you would listen to people doing the news down in Louisiana and they were they had a Cajun accent. You don't find that anymore. Everybody sounds like Anchorman. You know they all have gone to school. They've learned to get rid of their accents. And they have no personality anymore. Like you'd go to Boston, you hear everybody talking like this, you know. But now it's not. It's not like that anymore. It's it's a, it's a different world. We've well, when I first moved to New York, I I, I you know because I when I'd work even in the South, you wouldn't hear a lot of Southern accents, and mm -hmm. I lost try to you know get rid of mine. In New Orleans, people were doing on the radio dims, and we had morning guys on a station forever called Mutt and Jeff. Mutt and Jeff. Mm -hmm. No, Nut, Nut and Jeff. Nut and Jeff. And they talk like that. Hey, man, man, what was that cop doing stopping me? To, and, and everybody listens to him all the time. Yeah. Well, I always thought they were unprofessional. I get to, I get to New York, and they were the most unprofessional broadcasters I'd ever heard because I'd, I'd worked in L.A., and L.A. was, you know, you know, everybody's from Omaha or whatever. But you know, um, in you New have York, to get used they, to. They them. had. Uh, well, yeah, everybody has kind of a little accent here in New York. You know, the, the sometimes the, the, yeah. some of the broadcasters, sure. But I love uh, I love all that screaming and yelling and kicking and I don't yeah. know all that stuff. Uh, let's go to Craig, who's from New Orleans. Just Craig, it's Jay Thomas. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Uh, I didn't know if you had heard uh, over the weekend Southeastern. I live out in Hammond now from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. But uh, Southeastern won a game like that at the last second, like a minute and 14 left. No time out. They beat Sam Houston State. This is the first time they've ever gone this far. <laughs> In the playoffs. Southeastern. Southeastern Louisiana. Sam Houston State used to be Sam Houston Institute of Technology, SHIT. Uh -huh. Did you know that? Okay. Yeah, years ago. They used to be Sam Houston Institute of Technology, and they, they changed it to Sam Houston State. I know. So. But the announcers, All right. they freaked out like that, too. Uh, great I love local announcers. Did. I love the local. I love the local guys. And they'll never – by the way, Harry Carey's son – uh, if you, if you can, his name oh, was Skip name? Carey. Skip Carey, yeah. Skip. Well, I think he's dead now. No, Skip, he was the Skip died? I think so. He was the announcer in Atlanta, right? For, the, for Atlanta for years. Yeah. And he, and how Harry Carey, and here comes the pitch. He was the most boring. I mean, it was like, and how did oh he get my. The, did he get the job just because I don't, of his dad, or? 
I don't know. I guess Garrett. Is there any? Is there any Skip Carey sound? Out Harry there? Harry Carey was on Uncle Buck when I did because uh, Uncle Buck was a big Cubs fan, and uh, we oh, that's we right. we actually flew to uh, Chicago to film something with Harry Carey, and he goes, "They call me One Take Harry." And he was yeah. uh, he was drinking and he hold was peeing into the right. center. Murphy on the move, still going. Did he get it? Yes, great play. Murphy raced to the left center field wall and speared it. Then it's not bad. Not bad. There's a drive, deep right field, and the Braves win. A grand slam for Dwight Smith. All right. Okay. A little, little life in him. little life in him. All right. Thanks, Craig, in New Orleans. David of Baltimore. Uh, go ahead. Jay Thomas Show. Kevin Meany is in New York. I'm in California. Go ahead. Is it snowing back there? Snowing in New York? Uh, no. Uh, no. In yeah. Baltimore? Yeah. Anywhere. Is it snowing back there? It's cold. No, no, no. It snowed the uh, past two days. We just got over it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a little dust bit on the ground. Not a big dirty thing. now. But uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mm -hmm. say I'm glad you're back, and it sounds like your voice is getting back to normal. Which is good. You know it is. It, uh, it's um, it, it still hurts, and um, you know they told me it would take uh, a few months, and it's you know it's it's slow slow but, but sure. I'm back at the gym, but I'm I'm like a little it, sparrow lifting. It sounded, 30 it sounded pounds, like you were struggling sparrow. when you first came back. But either way, I wanted to say uh, you should have your birthday bash at the Seven Seas. <laughs> I think That's it closed. Idea. I believe. Yeah, yeah, not how a bad can the idea. Seven Seas? Oh, they're they're where, always open those Greek no, they, uh, diners. Where does Ira eat? Did, did they close? Oh, yes, but they... Steve, I think his name was, moved on to a new restaurant okay. that Ira was. I see. Yeah, so we can well, right. there. I love the show. Keep it up. Thank you. Let's go to Johnny, who's in Atlanta. Yes, Johnny, Johnny it's Jay Thomas. Go ahead. Hey, Jay. Uh, you're yeah. talking about Chip Carey. That's the grandson of Harry and the uh, son of uh, Skip, who, oh, who's okay. the boring guy. And Skip is dead, but he was he was pretty <laughs> good. In fact, when he was drinking, when he was doing his drinking, uh, he'd do the pregame on the radio for the Braves, and he'd just mm -hmm. be furious with people because he was working off a hangover and starting the drinking again. And the pregames were hilarious with him. He would, uh, people would call up asking him about the infield fly rule almost every damn, uh, show. And what would he do when, when he would hear that? Oh, he would, uh, go ahead and explain it in just, uh, detail again. And, uh. He wouldn't get uh, angry about explaining no, it no, over no, Why no. would people want to know? I think they were just trying to annoy him, right? Yeah, oh. they were trying to annoy oh. him. But his his voice was dripping with sarcasm the entire time he'd explain it, and then he'd berate the caller. He'd hang up on calls. He was actually, I think he was pretty good. But Sounds very much like Jay Thomas. Yeah, he, he was a little bit like that, except with <laughs> a, 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 a bad drinking problem, although he did quit drinking, which made him even angrier, I thought. But the Chip, Chip is boring. Skip, I like Skip. <laughs> So Chip was, Chip was the daddy, or, or no? Yeah, Chip, Chip is the Chip is the grandson of Harry Carey, and, and he's born of Skip Carey. Wow! Okay. And Chip well, you know, in New York, they just got rid of the last gambling. They had almost seventy-five or eighty years of the I same know. family rambling with gambling. The they're not. They're, we don't the have any more show. gamblings on. I think my no, mother was used to gambling. The, the great great grandson gambling, yeah. retired. You know, which which. Wish my dad had been something and just live off of the last name. Oh, is your dad Lowell Thomas? That was a famous announcer. Well, look at you now, Jay. You're uh, starring on yeah. uh, Sirius Satellite Radio, probably having about yeah. like 10,000 <laughs> listeners, and uh, yeah. hundreds of people Thanks. know your name. Thank you very much, Johnny. You're a good man. Uh, let's go to Bradley of Atlanta. Yes, Bradley, go ahead. Hey, Jay. I just wanted to say, I don't know if you already talked about it, but did you hear that one of the Alabama fans after that game with Auburn this lady was so mad that her fellow Alabama fans around her were not angry enough that she ended up shooting and killing a fellow <laughs> Alabama fan because they were not angry enough for her. About Garrett, the uh, Christina, somebody pull this story up. We must have it. It is. We must true. have it reported. I, 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 Garrett, I want she, you to put as much them? saliva. I want oh, yeah, as much saliva dead. as you they're can get they're in your dead. mouth when you. They're dead. Hold on a minute, Bradley. Oh, please God. hold on, oh. Garrett. Please read this breaking news story. Oh, Go ahead. God. They're both dead. Well, no, no, I mean, she's in jail. Oh, he's like, in jail. I, 
But I, I saw it was like a $75,000 bond or something. Oh, know. let's get her up and have her on the air. Get charged with the murder of yeah. Michelle Shepard after a shooting following an Alabama Auburn Iron Bowl party in Hoover, Alabama. <laughs> Apparently, Brisky went ballistic after she heard Michelle and her sister Nakisa joking with others that Alabama's loss wasn't as bad as the Heat losing a game. Brisky and Shepard supposedly got into an argument in the apartment, which eventually spilled over into the parking lot. The argument turned physical, and both women ended up on the ground. Brisky then pulled out a small caliber handgun and shot Shepard in the chest and killed her. Police said alcohol might have been involved. No surprise there. Oh! Oh my God! But you know what? I did hear this story. It was because she said that the Alabama loss wasn't as bad as the Miami Heat basketball yeah. team losing. Okay. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Well, I heard it wrong, but anyway. <laughs> you think somebody's going to shoot me because I'm laughing? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a nervous laughter. That's all it is. It's just... <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, if you if you have friends like that, and you're in a group of individuals like that, <laughs> and you're killed, it's just okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We don't need you around anyway. Oh, we don't need that. That's true. That's no, you don't. True. You don't need. Them. I mean, everyone <laughs> I like always the goes. Homeless. Oh my God. Who needs them? No. Well, you know what? They they look. Hold it. Who needs a guy that wakes up rent. under under a trash can with big gangrene sores on his leg and won't do anything about it? I mean, what what is he adding he to the landscape? Exactly. I don't know. He's yeah. a reminder for me to make sure that I bathe and keep a job. Really? I really? mean, sort mm -hmm. of. I don't okay. want gangrene. You know. I go by and I go, hey, I have one word for you. Oh, well, neosporin. 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 <laughs> my, my name for you. How about, how about a little neosporin, you know? I used to know a guy who used to, you know, pick up these guys on the side of the road and then bring them home and bathe them and give them clean clothes what? and stuff. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. Last I night, sex with them, yeah. um, I was watching the Turner Classic movies, and they have... Um, um, I don't watch that channel anymore because it's just all old movies. I don't, I'm not into Wait that a minute. Anymore. They had Patton Oswalt on. Patton Oswalt. Yeah. And he's the guest... Um, they're trying to have all kind of people. Shares coming on, and you're right. They have all these old, old movies that. Didn't that Alec it's, it's Baldwin over. used to do? A lot of people have done it, you know. Yeah. And they have um, uh, Drew Barrymore, who is just terrible and I so full her. of herself, so her. nuts. Are, why would you like her? She's I don't know. I had, a, I, had a, I had a crush on her. She's a horrible actress. She's an idiot. What? She thinks she's a I did. big, big I producer. Did. I did so, so Patton Oswalt. Picks two old movies. Um, one I'd never seen before with Glenn Ford, which was 310 to Yuma, the original. Oh, one. great movie. And, and some other, uh, kind of cowboy movie. And so he's there with that, that old queen, uh, Robert Osborne, mm -hmm. who, uh, announces the movies Is he and a queen? has, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so announces, seemingly, announces the movies and everything else. And I, I don't know if he's sexually a queen, but he's kind of a prissy man. And I like him. I like him. But, so so he says, so Patton, now it's 10 o'clock at night. My son and his girlfriend come downstairs. I'm sitting in the little TV room. And he looks over the top, and Patton Oswalt is so funny and having such a good time. He goes, well, I, bought, I brought two other films with me tonight, and this one is from Columbia. And so uh, Robert Osborne says, oh, uh, well, we, we, you know, and, and, it, and, he, and he, this, this Colombian guy, <laughs> his wife dies, and he has an accordion in the house that has horns on it that look like the devil. And he is a troubadour, and he thinks that the accordion has evil spirits in it, and it killed his wife. And so he is going to take the accordion. It must be, I don't know, a 800-mile trip. He's going to get a donkey, and he's going to take the accordion back to the guy that made it on the top of a mountain somewhere five or 600 miles away. He has no money, no nothing. And it is so beautifully shot, and a kid begins to follow him, and he travels with this kid, and it was spellbinding. We could not take our eyes off the movie or whatever, and finally he returns this thing, and, it, and it's twists and turns and fighting and cockfights and everything else. They come back to it, and Patton Oswalt is laughing because Robert Osborne is so prissy. He's going, well, that was certainly interesting. And he says, what else do you have? Well, here you go. He finds a movie from Belgium, and it's about two French guys who are complete assholes, and they get in a fight, and in the fight, they fall into a combine, and they are both paralyzed from the waist down, and they end up, and it's a comedy, they end up in the hospital together. And then 
one of them decides to go to Finland in his wheelchair, now rolling down the road in a wheelchair, to, from Belgium, he's going to go to Finland, to sue the company that owned the combine that he fell in. And the other guy, in his wheelchair, decides to go to a motocross match because he likes motocross, and they meet at the train station. Um, they have to wait for the train, and they end up in a bar. A heavy metal group takes over the bar and rolls them both and beats them up and steals all their money and credit cards. So now they're two complete assholes in wheelchairs, and they, they are now going across, like, the continent, one to go to see motocross and one to, um, to, to go to Finland. In the movie, motherfucker this, fuck you, nudity. This is on the Turner Classic Movies, right? When this was over and they went to Robert Osborne, I... I don't know if we could ever see it again. Were they bleeping uh, the the F bomb? No, thing? no, no. It was it was it was subtitled. Okay. Robert Osborne has been married since 1965. The man is as straight as the day is long. Um, <laughs> he's a wonderful man with a family and everything else. And I happen to believe I like him. But I looked at it and I thought, you know, if TCM uh, goes in this direction, this is where they ought to be kind of going, you know? <laughs> because they do show. Silent movies and yes. you know movies that aren't funny anymore and all that you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I don't think it'll happen until Robert you know goes to the great you know. Um, no, Alec projector. Baldwin used to always sit in with Robert Osborne and talk movies. Yeah, and, uh, I think so. So these two movies and and um, w one of them is called um, um, Wind Wind's Journey. That's the one from Columbia. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then I don't remember. And that's the, title the one of, with Glenn Ford. Um, it's, uh, yeah, no, no. Glenn Ford was in Three Ten to Yuma. Kind okay. Hearts and Coronets, The Wind Journeys, no. Three Ten to Yuma, or A Ultra. Oh, oh, A Ultra. Listen, uh, what's his name? Patton Oswalt is yeah. a member of some film uh, thing where they send you some crazy movie from around the world once a month, mm -hmm. and he shows them or whatever. I guess he does in L.A. I became. I mean, I've always liked him, but he was great. Mm -hmm. And and the. I don't know how you find these two movies or whatever. Kevin, you first of all, you just know Patton is completely stoned. Maybe they're on and Netflix. Watching. A, a I Ultra don't think is from so. 2004, so it's pretty Yeah, cool. no, he, he introduced them to the to the audience. Uh they are both magnificent and crazy. And um I my was in son Ireland with him a few years ago, Patton Oswald. I like him a lot. Good guy, good guy. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, funny guy. My son and his girlfriend sit through, you know, me, I'm sitting there, you know, Hoping my fucking taste buds come back. Uh, sit through two movies uh, with me till like you know two o'clock in the morning or something. Uh, let's go to Mike of uh, New York City. But when they were throwing motherfucker around on TCM, I'm sure they got letters. They had to. You could buy it uh, on Mike, Amazon for sixteen dollars. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you, which ones? A Ultra. You know That's what, Garrett? Saying. It is Christmas time. Hmm. Hmm. Is it subtitled though? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yeah. You know what? It isn't movie. a lot of work. It yeah. isn't a lot of work. I'm, 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 I'm missing out the last word all the time. No, no, no. I, no. I, I go, I'm never going to get to the end, and I, and I panic, and I don't get to if the end. If you don't like it, I'll give you the 16 bucks back. All right. All right. But the one you want to see is Win's win, Journey, because what what he does when he stops with the, with the, with the accordion, they have battles, all accordion battles, and all the way through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One like guy that. pulls his cock out, and a guy that looks just like you comes out and sucks it till he bleeds. <clears throat> oh my God! Because you turn everything into sex. No, I just thought you, I would said, you just said earlier no, that there were you're like a fights. fourteen fucking year old kid. Here no. you are, a brilliant comic, and you bring just this. You brought up cock two cent earlier. fucking humor to this you show. Did. It drives you me nuts. You did earlier. You brought it. it drives up. me nuts. You brought it up. I didn't bring it up. You, know, you did. Stuff you'd never do on stage, you bring here and drag the show down. I wonder what the slime language is for suck my bloody cock. I'll look it up. Well, it's... Thank you, Garrett. Mike of uh, New York City, go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, I just uh, was wondering about Oliver Stone's JFK. You know, he he depicted oh, New Orleans. I Orton. love that movie. Yeah, oh, I just do. Uh, but New well, Orleans... what he didn't depict properly is Jim Garrison, who was a vindictive... Yeah. Um, very gruff, 
huge guy like Bull from Night Court. I was saying that yesterday. Yeah. And Kevin Costner did the job he was supposed to do, but it was Oliver Stone trying to prove that he yeah. believed in that conspiracy. Great movie, exactly. but, but 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 more vindictive than uh, I mean the the real the real life uh, but politics Joe Pesci are vindictive. And John Candy both were played under life characters. Were those based on real Marcella people or? No, no, no. Um, those were real. Those were real, real people that were members of the, 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 not, well, not, uh, Candy, but, uh, no, those were all real people. All of them. That were they, part they of uh, the conspiracy that, uh. Yeah. Oh, they're on the and, newspaper. And, and well, I don't think Jay ever yeah. mentioned that any of the Marcella uh, family was involved. Uh, no, I don't, that, no, I, I, no, I don't no, think I'm Marcella just, was I'm, mentioned I'm in the mover. No. Okay. I, no, yeah. I don't know. Look, here was the deal. Kennedy, and it's hard to believe how many women he fucked in the White House. And they say okay. Robert did too. It's hard to believe. They had women going in and out of there all the time. Judith Exner was supposedly uh, screwing him, and and he, she was with you know a, a mob boss or whatever. He didn't like it, and Gee, then huh? the Can't mob be. boss said that if he tried to kill Castro and help him kill Castro, that they would lay off of him. And so they they put the with the CIA and all exploding cigars. They tried everything to kill Castro, and um, and they didn't lay off of him. And so the 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 mob and the Teamsters were very angry. At the Kennedys, so that's one form of it. And of course, Marcello's, that was his area, Dallas and New Orleans. And then the other part of it was that, um, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, hated Robert Kennedy. And if, if JFK was dead, he knew that LBJ would get rid of Robert Kennedy. So that's the other part of the conspiracy. And then was the CIA and, and or Hoover somebody mad knew... about the Bay of Pigs? Somebody was mad about the Bay of Pigs. Maybe the CIA. They'd been embarrassed or whatever. Here's what I think happened. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald decided to shoot him. Mm -hmm. The mob was on their way to shoot him that day also. The CIA was going to kill him that day too. And J. Edgar Hoover uh, wanted him dead also. It just happened to happen at that moment. Okay, that's a new book. That? I like that. What do you think of that? Like, like right when Lee Harvey Oswald pulls the trigger, three other guys start shooting. God, we should have done that. Huh? Well, he did it. There you go. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, that's as likely. <clears throat> you know, I, I love likely. hearing you talk about New Orleans. I'm married into a Cajun family. My soon-to-be ex-father-in-law is from St. Martinville. Now, why are you getting divorced? What's the problem? Uh, well, it could be infidelity on her part. You know, a little real. Now, wait a minute. Now, what did you do to cause her to turn to another? <laughs> well, anyway, you know, that's true. Oh, hold on a minute. That's what a good did you question. do? Yeah. I mean, if, you know, there's two sides to every story. I mean, oh, that's true. a lovely that's woman, a lovely woman that you marry. You have children with her? Yes. Well, um, I'm sure, you know, this is not, uh, I'm sure she's not some, some whore or some horrible person no, that you married. And, you know what? Well, then what, what, did you, what did you do to t make her turn to another? We, we have the best relationship now. You know, we're not, really? we're not meant to be together. You know, we're good friends. We're really mm -hmm. good as friends, but I don't know. Did, did you meet somebody night. else? No, no, no. Lord, no. I, I met a truck. I'm a truck driver. I now. Am, do you know? Do you know the guy? Was he friends with you? Uh, no, he actually worked with her, and um, <clears throat> where she worked, and uh, he tried to blackmail her. He videotaped an encounter. What? Oh my yeah. God! I found out about it. I threatened him, and she got a. Now wait a minute. So you had to go to your 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 unfaithful wife's aid? Yes. Yes. I'm that a real is man. wild. Now they're not together anymore, are they? No. No. no thank no. God. She had him arrested. So what was he going to get out of her? What was he going to get out of her if he blackmailed her? Control. Control. I, I think he was a, a real sociopath. I yeah. think he just wanted a... Well, he must have been, you know what, he was great in the sack. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't get that far. It was oh, a blowjob. It was a blowjob. Now, now, your wife had to confess um, this to you? Yes. She lied about oh my it God. forever. Yeah. Well, no, you lie about certain What did you, what, you went, um, Christina? What was, um? Just a blowjob? <laughs> 
That's what she said. <laughs> but she <laughs> lied about everything else for a long time. It seems. I would have picked anything else but a blowjob. You know what? We we lie to ourselves the most. So you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. There's a man that's been to therapy. I've so now, um, yeah. is she moving back to Louisiana and you're staying in New York City? No. No. Uh, well, we're from Memphis. Okay. Hmm. I am actually the cucumber guy. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And mean? she's cheating on you? I can't imagine. What is, what is, what is, what is, what is the cucumber? What does that mean? That, you don't, he doesn't need to explain that, Jay, okay? He's the cucumber guy. And that's no, plenty of all the information I need to know. Garrett, what does that mean? Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know what? I forget the show as soon as it's over. Remind me yeah, what, what the sure. cucumber is. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I don't you know. stuff you stuffed a, a cucumber and a turkey? No, I. You you said most truckers have a dick that looks like a uh, sweet potato. I called in and said no, mine's more like a cucumber. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, well, I that remember a, that phone call. It was a moment of time. Well, Mike, you know, good luck to you. And uh, how old are the how old are the children uh, of this broken home that are going to be, of course, yeah, and and enjoy your like new life number. because things are about to turn around for you. Yeah, drive oh, that shit. truck up here. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you read some more than Brock Chopra uh, to him, uh, Mike? Uh, how, how how old are the children? How old are the kids? Fourteen and nine. Okay. Oh, they're going to be completely fucked up. No, no, no. Not. He's doing the right thing so that they don't get completely fucked up. No. Now, what about Christmas? Where yeah, are they going to spend expert. Christmas? Actually, I'm going home for Christmas, and we're going to all spend it together. With the wife? Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Actually, I talked to my wife, my ex-wife, this morning, and I'm going to bring Kate down on Christmas morning, and we're all hey, going to have Christmas hey, Mike. Uh, together. Hey, Mike, this, this is what you need to do. Nice? So you're there with the wife, and she's at the table, and bring you're all your pals, and you're breaking up. And so your wife tastes something. She goes, wow, this, this has an unusual taste. And you go like this. It tastes anything like a dick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just do that. Just do that from every now and again. Okay. You know? oh. Okay. oh, my I God. I got some. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, God. I got something in my eye. Does it feel like a dick? <laughs> oh, get her a hair it's every now and again. Christmas and then be like, I heard you like blowjobs. Yeah, yeah, I got your hair dryer. Here you go. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. God. There you go. Yeah. Let's make it oh awkward. my God! You're the wind. Saying, I'm the wind. such a baby. You know. How about this? The wind. Oh God! You see Childish. the wind out there, Mike? Fourteen yeah, year like old blowjob <laughs> out there, isn't it? Like a big blowjob, really coming across the plains here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. She got upset that I went to her aid. That I cussed this guy out and threatened him. That was the whole part. You know, look, I'm a man. I'm gonna step up. You are a man. Yeah. She yeah. said she could handle dick. it. She said she could handle it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, whatever. Well, I've told the story a million times. I, I I go to lunch one day with a guy and with this guy and and he's divorced and he's very upset. He's getting divorced and his wife is taken up with another guy. And um, it was kind of an uncomfortable lunch. I didn't know Terrible. the guy that well. Yeah. And so, okay, okay, you know, you, you know, I've been there and breaking up, and he's very upset. So about a uh, a year or so passes, and I happen to see the guy I had lunch with the the I happen to see the breakup guy. I wasn't that friendly with him. I see him in New York, and I go, "Hey, uh, we had we had lunch um, about a, you know a year and a half ago with somebody." He goes, "Oh wow, yeah, great to see you." And I'm going, "You know, and remember that lunch, and you were in the midst of breaking up with your wife, and all. How are things going?" He goes, "Oh, we're back together again." Oh. I go, "Really?" He goes. Yes, you know, apparently whatever I did to to drive her away to another man, she forgave me for. That's what he said to me. Now, I don't know the guy well enough to go, what are you, fucking idiot? That's what he said to me. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Whatever I did to drive her away to another man, she forgave me for it. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, I mean... I would I would take her back just to torture her. <laughs> I would pretend I was in love with her again, Kevin. Mm -hmm. I would go through the therapy. I would do it all. I would have another ceremony. I would get back together again. We'd get in the house. And about a week into us being together, I would start up with the fucking mental breakdown attacks. Passive aggressive? You betcha. Nice. Yeah, well, you know, um, your back hurts? Well, maybe it's from fucking that other guy all the time before he came back to me. Um, mm -hmm. hey, 
Is that the macaroni and cheese? What's the matter? I'm sorry. Did I say something? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know, y'all fucked, so maybe your back hurts from fucking him. I don't know. I'm not angry. I'm not angry. You know. <laughs> hey, that guy reminds me of somebody. That that is an, either an actor or the guy you used to fuck. <laughs> yeah. Then you're gonna hear. That's hear. incredible. Um, can I say one and thing? Then, and then you get after you come in or you get off, go and go uh, like this. Go. He really stretched that thing out. Maybe we need some surgery. Uh, now. I'm going to tell you something. That's the movie I would write. Because that's what I think people deserve when they injure you by blowing somebody at work or telling you that you did something and ran them into somebody else's arms. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Now, of course, my explanation, if somebody ever said, now, why would you screw around? And I would say this. I, don't, I didn't love them. It's just like masturbating with a friend. That's all. It's just a, it's just a, a conduit. Friends with your benefits. Penis. Whatever, whatever. You know, uh, you know, women catch these guys screwing around, and the guy has no interest in the other woman at all, none whatsoever. None. He's just masturbating women, with a friend. Women don't get it, right, Christina? They don't understand it. Right. I mean, it's meaningless. <laughs> and, and you know, and the, and the other woman, you know, I don't know what you know, I, what 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 the guy's saying and everything else, you know, like, oh, I'm going to leave my wife, and I, what do you cra leave your wife for? What a new set of in laws? Why would you even get married again? For what reason? Mm. My uh, wife, she was very happy that it wasn't another woman. She was very happy that it was. I, no, that she would be wasn't. the best case scenario. You were if my husband your wife came was, to me and your wife said was I wanted to divorce. No, that's the no, best she, case scenario. Because then was, you know there's nothing wrong with you. It's just not your preference. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. She really exactly. was. She really was. Uh, she she actually said that to me. That she said, "I'm so glad it's not another woman." Right. Plus, she's got a GBF for life. So. Mm -hmm. Now hold on a second. I thought your wife was very upset. At well, first she, there's at, an initial shock. I'm sure. Yes, and then and then. I think a lot of different people got involved, including lawyers and her family, and it kind of turned around where it was all focused on Kate and that I shouldn't share in any uh, parental rights, you know. So Really? Yeah, and then it got, the whole Just church kind of came down on me and said, well, you know. What? He, oh, yeah, that's the way it was. It was, it was you mean bad. she went to a priest? She's still a Catholic and all that stuff? Well, it went to the... the her parents are very, very Catholic. Okay? They're you know what, Catholics. Garrett? Ga Garrett? Yeah? She lay with a man who loves a man. It's in the Bible somewhere. Yeah. And she's... Yeah. Mm, well, she's shown. I can't... You know, part so of she, me your wife believes. That, your wife believes all that Catholic mumbo-jumbo? She believes it because her parents... Uh, that's the way she was raised. And you were lucky you got rid of her. No, she's a great, great. You're lady. more Catholic her. than she is because there are more gay Catholic priests than there are, you know, people she's like her. She's a great lady, my ex wife, well, and I love her very look much. And we're and as the other caller said, they have a great relationship, you know, with each other. And hmm. I have a great relationship with Marianne. All right, and I'm, I'm happy. Mike, for thank that. you very much. Thank you, thank you. Let's go to Rich of Pennsylvania. Who did your uh, girlfriend leave you for, Rich? She left me for another girl. <laughs> well, that's. Love what? How you. does that make you feel? How Woo, does that make party. you feel? Did you? Let's do did the you, vagina did thing. You, <laughs> yeah. but, but did you? Did you know it, that she would had those inclinations? Did you ever do uh, it with her? No, I had no idea that she had that. Uh, that you know, she was going to go that way. But I huh. did. After after another about a week or so, I met up with him again. And we were in the bar. We had a couple of drinks. One thing led to another. It was the only threesome that I ever was involved in. And let me tell you something. The sex was great with her and her girlfriend better than, than with just her. Uh, yeah, that's the, the way to do it. it. I think it guy went, it went horribly wrong after that. <laughs> well, I'm sure it did. Yeah, it always good. You're supposed to just do it and go. Thank you, Richard, yeah. Pennsylvania. Stay where you are. Whores and pimps and Obamacare Ooh. coming up. The Jay Thomas Show. It's the afternoon show. We will say what you are thinking. What can I say? The guy's good. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Jay Thomas. Indeed. Sirius XM 104. It's time for a change. O-P-A-M-A. -A, Obama. Uh, do we have Dennis off from the Bunny Ranch uh, to talk about Obama, Obamacare for the whores? Oh, he is? Okay, that's fine. So I'm trying we'll to right. 
We're not going anywhere. When we come, uh, I spoiled a uh, Texas teen um, who, who killed four people in a drunk driving accident, Dodge Prison in Texas, and was sentenced to probation instead of uh, jail after uh, for, killed four people. His defense attorneys argued that his wealthy parents never taught him right from wrong. They called it the affluenza defense. He was too affluent. Ethan Couch, 16, was looking at 20 years behind bars for this June wreck. Instead, walked out of a Fort Worth courtroom with 10 years probation. The legal team said he needed counseling, not hard time. They they want to send him to one of these Southern California treatment centers that mm -hmm. cost like a half a million a year. The prosecutor said that Couch and his pals had been partying with beer that they stole from the Walmart and were on another booze run when oh, the boy. Uh, crash occurred. Eleven people were injured. And he uh, died. Local of no, the kid's alive. Oh, He'd be 20 alive. years okay. in jail. Okay. No, he got probation. He's not going to jail. Killed four people. There were bodies everywhere. If he was so the rich, local... why would he have to steal beer from Walmart? Because, there's, you know, they're fucking rich kids. Yeah. Oh. But they got him off on, his, on, the, on the rich kid syndrome. Nice. Too rich. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't know. Yeah. Then there's the too poor syndrome where, you know, your parents are too poor, you know. <laughs> We got to think of something for the middle class. Uh, let's go to Dennis Hoff. Dennis, uh, uh, welcome yeah. back. Of course, we don't have him yet. No, he's in the oh. middle of his photo shoot. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm told who? to call another extension, so I'm reaching him right now. Who Who would want a photo of him? Maybe the I new season of Cat House is coming out. Not Are really still doing of that? him. I think it's mostly just oh, him the behind the bunch of girls. Well, he also is on Sirius XM's Vivid Channel. Uh, 102, uh, Thursdays. What does he talk about? Eastern. What kind of a show does he do? Whores. It's Moonlight Bunny Ranch show. So he just talks about, you know. I think he talks to some of the girls and, yeah. That's interesting. No, it isn't. He owns some, like, <laughs> alien visitor center in Nevada, too. Well, I've been to, uh, Roswell, New Mexico, and that's a great, they have, a, you know, a great little museum down there. <laughs> you know, for aliens and, oh, it's wonderful. They don't really have a museum for aliens, oh, do they? Yeah, yes. they yeah, of course they do. My God, I brought Kate there a few years ago. Those were like, weather this. balloons. She goes, this Those is the were worst like... vacation ever, Daddy. <laughs> the worst. But she never stops talking about it. She still talks oh, you about know it to this day. When we were moving from back east to, to back, back here, my wife flew with the two cats and this woman that worked with us, and I drove the kids from New York. And so we stop in Pennsylvania, and I visit a buddy, and then we go to Amish country. They mm -hmm. hated it, hated it. Right. So then I take them to the driving range. Hated it, hated it. Then we go to Gettysburg. Hated it. Hated everything. Mm -hmm. And then I see um, the largest Abraham of Lincoln's mother's mother's house. Okay. Well, I've been to that too. I've been. I had him on the air, and I've been to that twice. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they hate. They hate. They hate. Now, I bet they talk about this all the time now. Don't they? Because they liked it. We, we were driving a four-wheel drive vehicle, mm -hmm. and I, I said they allowed me to go see Abraham Lincoln's mother's shack uh, in the edge of Kentucky there, uh, that, that I would take them four-wheel driving through a man's field. And we did it. They were cool. And I went four-wheel drive, and I went right through this guy's um, horn field or whatever, and they were like, <laughs> it was a Sunday, and they were having dinner, and they all ran out with, the, with their napkins around their necks, yelling and actually shaking their fists like in a movie. Mm -hmm. And the kids never forgot that. <laughs> Now, had I gotten stuck or something, these people would have beaten me to death with pitchforks. I just turned right into the to the oh, cotton thing there, to the, to the corn. I right into the cornfield. Isn't I that the great trucks. when you do something like that though? Like, and, oh, they and, love and it. They'll, they just laughing like that's the A best. A friend of mine pulled into his driveway once with his kid and turned up some heavy metal as loud as he could get into the car, and the kid never stopped talking about it. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Dennis Hoff and um, Lalani Ray, uh, who is uh, one of his uh, uh, prostitutes there at the Bunny Ranch. Of course, you can hear them talk about all that on Vivid Channel. Do we call them prostitutes or whores, or what do we do? How do we refer to them? Uh, Lalani, welcome to the show. Are you comfortable with being uh, called the prostitute or a whore? What do we? How do we call you? Um, I prefer working girl. Oh, I like that. Working girl, nice. sex Softer. worker. All right. 
Uh, Dennis Hoff, welcome to the show. Now, you're a big right-wing guy. You're, you're not for this Obamacare. Is that, is that correct? No, I'm not, not really you? a right-wing guy because, look, at if you're a right-wing guy, you know, my mom taught me that you're going to be wealthy and you want to be white, uh, then you need to be a right-wing guy. And Larry Flint told me when I got in the sex business, you go, oh, man, Democrat. They won't That's let right. us fuck. They won't let us do anything. So, right. you know, I, I kind of ride the fence here, but in this case, I'm, 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 it's Obama care for me. She's happy about it. I'm unhappy about it. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's go over it. You have more than 50 employees. You make a ton of money. Why, why is it such a uh, uh, why is it such a hardship on you to pay for insurance okay. for for uh, Lalani and the and the hardworking girls there? And then they make plenty of money. Everybody makes money on the deal. Well, it, 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 the girl. First of all, the girls aren't employees. They're they're independent contractors. Okay. So it's oh. a real good thing for them. Uh -huh. And it's a real good thing for you because you don't have to provide insurance for them, correct? That, that's absolutely correct. So why are you uh, bummed out about it then? Well, because like Leilani, who couldn't get insurance before, because they, 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 when they classify you, the insurance companies, they classify the the illegal girls like the legal girls, and illegal girls have all kinds of issues and diseases and all that. So it's great. Right. Also, we have a, a girl that had a uh, something that she couldn't get insurance for before, a pre-existing condition, and now she can get it. That's all good now right Leonie, you happy i'm really really happy i i'm so excited i've waited for so long for health now, insurance. But, but, but you but you know when we watch the show these guys are paying a lot of money i'm sure dennis screws all of you out of your money um but that's what he's supposed to do <laughs> i screw if you I make all this money if a thousand bucks or 800 or two thousand for these parties and all that it would seem like you could afford uh insurance Lolani. you know it's it's just it's, the thing is, like, what he was saying is that because I am a working girl, they classify me as basically the same as a streetwalker. Or it's a high-risk uh, job. Right. No matter sure. what I do, they're not going to accept me. And also, I, too, have a pre-existing condition, which, mm. you know. Chlamydia? No. no. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> that was just a joke. That's uh, you, but you, you know what, Jay? She, she's so right because they couldn't get insurance at any price. It wasn't the money. They couldn't. You know what? I never thought about that. But I guess if you're a race car driver, or if you are yeah. a, a working girl, mm -hmm. if you are, uh, you know, climb up the sides of buildings and, and wash windows or whatever, the insurance companies don't want to fool with you. They don't want so to now fool. you can do it. Now, now, Dennis, um, you should have no complaint at all because your independent contractors right. are are getting insurance. So Except why that. did he, why did we even read in the papers and? online that you were upset with all here's yeah. my bitch jay here's my bitch i have i have seven brothels now i've grown up since i was up seeing you last in fact brooke taylor wow. who you love is standing here waving at you and wow. uh so we got seven brothels is she still on cnn yeah she's on she's on the on the working on the girls, yeah, right. working girls in bed <laughs> brooke's on everything <laughs> That's right. and uh yeah. she loves you so and, now now so now you got seven brothels the economy hasn't affected the brothel business well it has it is affected terribly. The business is off 50%. So what I'm doing, because I've got the national brand, I'm the Coca-Cola, if you will, uh, I've gone out and bought up all the other ones, and I'm going to make them work because I, you wow. know, I'm, I'm telling the girls, you know, forget all that. We're going to get through this, and we've done very well, mm -hmm. and we've made a lot of money. Now, mm -hmm. I, because I, if you're under 50 employees, you're exempt from Obamacare, under 50. Right. But because I have I have like twenty twenty five employees at seven different locations now they're lumping me together, and now it's going to cost me an extra quarter million dollars a year. But I but just you thought you didn't what? have to they provide have to. it because you're they're all independent contractors. No, the independent contractors is a separate issue. They don't have to pay. I'm talking about my employees, bartenders, drivers, oh. Oh, management, okay. uh, you know, massage people. Lalani, he can afford it. He can afford it. <laughs> oh. You know, I'm going to say no comment, but, yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, it's, it's yeah. funny, Jay, that I give back to the community. It's money that I give to the Girls and Boys, Boys Club, mm -hmm. to the Sheriff's Department, to all the, the different fundraisers that we're doing, like right now. Do you sponsor any Little League teams so they have a shirt that says the the Bunny Ranch on it? You know? Softball teams. We're more about softball. We kind of stay away from the mm -hmm. Little League, even though they've asked yeah. us to do that. We just felt really? like we shouldn't. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it cuts into, into that, that money. I mean, uh, uh, so that, that's a, it's a big, it's a big deal for me. But you know what? What, you, what, 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 what are we supposed to do about people, your bartenders, your bus, bus or people? Or somebody with a big company like you that has, like. Now, now, know. Lalani, do you have an attendant? Is there a, a woman or a, 
or somebody that works that cleans up after you, after you uh, have your way with a paying customer? Um, well, I, I'm the kind of girl where I like to clean up after myself, but we do have mm. housekeepers here. I would pay are... money to see that. I would pay money <laughs> just for clean up. To see a woman clean yeah, up. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want to do. And you know what? I, I wouldn't want to be charged full price. Is that with a paper towel or well, whatever? Now that, now that we're in the family, you get the serious <laughs> discount. You know what? Do you ever give? Do you ever have coupons? I've always wondered about that. Do you ever lay out a coupon? Jay, you email me, Dennis at BunnyRanch.com. I'm going to send you yeah. a booty pass. It's like having a AAA card. You need it in your pocket just in case you ever need it. Sure, okay. And I can just drive out there with my buddies. Yeah. Uh, how far are you that from Las so Vegas? That is so gay. I'm just going to go out there with my buddies. Oh, oh, it, oh it's, it's uh, the buddy thing. You can tell stories to each other. Actually, oh. the Bunny Ranch is, is between Reno and Lake Tahoe in northern Nevada. I oh, have, that's a long I way. have four places mm -hmm. up here, the Kit Kat, the Sagebrush, the Love Ranch, and the Bunny Ranch. Mm, in southern wow. Nevada, I have three that are less than an hour out of Las Vegas. The closest one wow. to Las Vegas, the Alien Cat House and the Love Ranch, and, and the new one we're building, Dennis Hoff's Cat House. Wow. Now, Lalani, uh, so you clean up for yourself after that, but somebody must have to get tipped, and you, they, they don't have any money, and they deserve insurance, don't you think, Lalani? I, Lonnie, right? You know what? I absolutely and I 100% um, agree mm -hmm. with you. We do have housekeepers mm -hmm. here that are just beautiful, beautiful women, and I, I mm -hmm. adore them, and so I always try to I always try to keep myself clean and everything clean and tip them as well as I can. Yeah. And here's, what, here's what we do, Jay, and you're right. They deserve they to deserve. have insurance. They That's deserve gone. it. I, they deserve it, but here's been our, our way we've run it in the past, is most mm -hmm. of our, our, our employees are women, and those women typically are married, and they have programs with their husband, and we pay them a lot extra money. We pay the, Some of these bartenders are making twice what uh, they would anywhere else. So we pay them a lot of money and mm -hmm. let them deal with it on their own. Now, okay. I've got to deal with it. What about if somebody has insurance? Like, you know, for instance, you mentioned that, like, say, the bartender there at the Bunny Ranch, she's getting insurance through her husband's plan, and he works at an automotive place or something. Right. And does do you have to provide insurance for her even though... She does have existing insurance? Well, that's up in the air. The insurance people can't give me the answer. To we that. don't know that yet. Okay, well, I think that will be worked right. out, though. Look, I'm, I'm all for taking care of the people that need this. I mean, I'm not against Obamacare. I'm against the fact that they're, they're instead of calling each one of my business a business on its own, where I'm 50, mm -hmm. under 50 employees, that they're, they're lumping them all together. I don't think that's fair. Well, well you'd have to make each one of the places a separate uh, company. Yeah, like... Do you have brothers and you have brothers and sisters? You know Brooke Taylor. She just came in here and leaned over the bed. And this, mm. but in fact, I'm going to throw some pictures mm. up uh, at at Dennis Hoff. And you've is, got you've got Brooke Taylor's butt there, Lalani. How's that butt look to you? Do you ever partake in that Brooke butt? Brooke Taylor just is one of the sexiest women here and one of the mm. most intelligent women that I've ever met. Mm. So, mm. Uh, Leilani, yeah. do you like girls? Um, I just played with a girl last night on my free time. Mm, so yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> just played with a girl last night. Oh my God. Oh, wow. We Please. we tried to get Christina down there to get get worked over, but she didn't want to I, do it. You know, I think Christina should come come here. Just he you know what, Christina? Here. Here's what we want to do. Yeah. You and I in the same room. We oh, won't touch oh, each other. God. So one a girl is working you over, and a Garrett, and a girl's working can me over. We're all in the same. Outside the window looking in? <laughs> no, you can be in the room, too. So we're all <laughs> in there naked, party. all getting, it's and you know so what? We horrible. have a contest, Lamani. So, so horrible. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll put a couple hundred bucks up for the first one that comes. Why do you force one? me to think You're... about you in a sexual way? Ugh. Because yeah. my, like I have a new body now. I lost all this weight. I weigh 160 pounds. I'm ready to go now. I look like a, <laughs> I look like one of those old guys in the in the uh, Sears catalog. Now it's you all know. night. I got to push this thought out of my yeah, head. Yeah, me too. Uh, Lalani Ray, uh, what like like uh, when I watch the show, there, there's a lot of money. I mean, it's like thousands of dollars and everything else. Do you have a rate that a truck driver can pull over and get knocked off for a hundred, couple hundred bucks or something? Do you have the <laughs> kind of truck driver rate? Well, no? listen, I'm not going to go into too many details, but mm -hmm, I will mm -hmm. say, however, that I do try to be uh, budget-friendly because I understand oh. that yeah. not everybody has the same budget. So I try, I try to work with some people, mm -hmm. although it doesn't always work out. You know what I mean? But um, you How know, about a 10% discount, Dennis, for everybody that heard this interview you and get, comes in and says, Okay, if they come in, 10%. I'm going to do better than that. If they right. come in 
and, and we, before the end of the year, and they say, mm-hmm. Jay Thomas sent me, we're giving them 25% off. Woo! Wow. Yep, okay, everybody. yeah, all right. And by, by the way, right. the prices, look at you, We have a lot of truckers listen. You know, well, I know, so, and, yeah. and they come in here. Do you have parking? Oh, we, had a, we had a rich guy. No, no, we had a really rich guy. We had a rich guy call from uh, Del Mar earlier today. They got a lot of rich guys. He was looking at three Bentleys at one time. Well, you, you Lilani, uh, Lilani Ray, do you ever, this is what I like to, you go in there and you give them a, one of those Mickeys and you knock them out and you steal all their money. How many times do y'all do that? Uh, every day. You roll them, roll them good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's all I do. What do you think all I do right. in the rooms? <laughs> uh, so, Dennis, you got into this business, you what, you owned a service station or something? And then, I started and then, off with that, then I, then I got into real estate. Developing real estate, but but how did you get, how did you get into the to the owning of the money? Was it bankrupt or something? Is that no the story? no no? What happened is I dated this girl and she worked here and I didn't realize she was a working girl. Then I found out she worked here, so I came in here and then I brought Andy Kaufman in here and Bob Zamuda, and uh, and we partied here forever. And what about seventy eight? Kaufman says, Dennis, let's buy this place and make it our den. Okay, so I started working on it. He died in eighty four. And I bought it in '92, and I've had the wow. time of my life. So he owned wow. part of it. Uh... No, he didn't, but he was going to. But that was the plan. But then he he died before I, I did. But Kaufman mm-hmm. was my dear friend, and we got a Kaufman room here, and and we're getting ready to come out with something huge. Do you know George team. Shapiro? Uh, yeah, I've met George. I don't know him real personally, but okay. Zamuda's in here all the time. So Bob Zamuda uh, has probably slept with two or three thousand girls here. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, I don't like to too. hear. He's like well, a new book coming out. Uh, Garrett, let's get him on, Christina. He's a wild guest. He came yeah. on here and just yeah. tore this joint yeah, up. Yeah, there was and, just this. Uh, uh, you remember, James? I don't think we have a black person that'll ever forget the Bob Samuda right. uh, interview that we wasn't had. there. Just uh, Lalani, one second, Lalani Ray. When, when I hear that you had a pre-existing condition, that's a little worrisome. I'll be honest. Yeah, with that is. Uh, is it is it a down below condition? Is that what it is? Or Absolutely something? not a down below. Oh. Uh, right. It is right, nothing good. that will affect my clients on any level. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about it. Everything's fine and dandy. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be allowed to work here. Oh, what right. is it? Uh, is that, that's between me and my doctor. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, let's go to Jerry the Ferry, who's giving us a call on line one. He has a question for Dennis Hoff from the Bunny Ranch. We're talking oh, about how he's being charged a quarter of a million dollars and, and this, this Obamacare thing. That does sound uh, uh, especially high. Uh, Jerry, go ahead, Jerry the Ferry. Hi, Jay. I'm so glad you're back. This is Jerry the Fairy Furlot, and I wanted Mm -hmm. to talk to Dennis. Um, I'm curious. I think you should start an all-male gay brothel and call it the Dude Ranch. Well, and you know what? You know what? It doesn't work. It doesn't. I think it's been tried, Dennis, and it doesn't work. No, you know what? You know what, Jay? You're you're wrong. But here's the deal. It's not for not for heterosexual women. It's for guys, and that will work. Now, I'm thinking about doing this because the Republicans want to come to Vegas for, for the next uh, Republican convention, and I'm thinking about rolling it out there so some of those Republicans that like boys or uh, men uh, can uh, party too. Well, I would no, love wait a it, uh, if you mm-hmm. got Kevin Meany in there and I could order up the Alec Baldwin. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. What about the Ron Jeremy? Oh, oh, I love the hedgehog. All right, thank you. <laughs> your your last you, name is not Furlock, by his name is not Furlock, by the way. Thank you very much, Ron Jerry. Jerry. Love Jay the and, uh, yesterday, and he Ron Jeremy. He, Ron is the eating. Now you know what, Ron Jeremy definitely. Uh, Lalana, he's got to have a pre-existing condition of some sort. I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> no, no, no. He, yeah, he's he looks bad. he looks pre-diseased to me. Hey. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, they're shooting what? me for the cover of Penthouse right now, so I'm going to put Brooke on here because she wants, us, she misses you. Sure. Tell, tell right. Jay he gets get the freebie. <laughs> He's, He's the worst. <laughs> He's yeah. so bad. It's horrible person. A freebie? What, horrible. what is this word, free? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I don't know what the meaning of that, free. <laughs> you know you know what I'm afraid of? Is that Brooke? Is that you, Brooke? This is Brooke. Uh, Brooke, it's Jay Thomas. Hi, Jay. Um, what I'm afraid of is, is I would go down there and, and, and we would make love and everything else, and you'd follow me home. That would be the biggest problem, follow me home. You're that good, huh? Well... That's what they say. No, I mean, I, th- that's um, probably the first time someone's again? been disappointed that I might follow them home. Follow them home. Um, uh, somebody just sent me a note and said you had a client, you, you, uh, Lilani and and uh, Brooke, and talk about it, who paid over two million dollars for services. Who, who would that be, and what were the services? 
<laughs> yes, I was here during uh, when that party w- took place, and um, yes. it was multiple girls for multiple months, and uh, he had quite a good time. He lived there over a period of time? Uh, yeah, he stayed here for quite a while. And now, then he was, lived locally, so uh, the girls... But was, it, was he with other men? Did he bring other buddies in and stuff? Or was it oh, a... no, 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 no. They were all for him. It was like five or six girls, I think, and they were all for him. Every day? Every day, all day. Okay. Wow. He took shifts sleeping. <laughs> and, it, and he was able... Was it, was it... You know, it couldn't be all screwing. He couldn't do it, so he was just enjoying... Kind of being there. Hell, Nick, Dennis Nick should have made him a partner. I you know, mean, if you over... could have six beautiful women around you all the time, wouldn't you? No. Yes. Uh-huh. I wouldn't pay $2 million for it, but I'd if like If you that. had it, you might. What I'd like is some skanks, and I have like a pound of Coke. That's what I'd like. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I can't help you uh, with that. <laughs> Lalani Ray, and of course, my favorite, Brooke Taylor from the Bunny Ranch. And uh, you're still doing the TV show? Is it still on HBO? Is that still happening? Well, we actually, the last show that we came out with was on Showtime called Working. Showtime. Or, I'm sorry, Cinemax. Cinemax. Oh, they're going to Cinemax. Me. Cinemax. Uh, Cinemax. That's fine. Cinemax called Working Girls in Bed. So, uh, okay. But you could still find Watch Cat that. House on On Demand, and you can uh, find Working Girls in Bed on On Demand and on Cinemax. And also, um, uh, BunnyRanch.com and, and on Sirius XM's Vivid Channel 102, Thursdays, uh, 7 o'clock and 4 o'clock Pacific. Lalani and Brooke, thanks very much. Tell Dennis thanks, and we'll we'll talk to you again later. Maybe maybe I'll see you at some Too point. Too bad he's see not you. around, because they had that whole thing about uh, Andy Kaufman that he had faked his mm-hmm. death, just like about a month ago. You remember that, Garrett? Yeah, yeah you know, daughter. actually, we do a Ustream show live here from the Bunny Ranch on Saturdays, and I got to talk to Bob Zamuda about that, who, oh. as you know, uh, is a mm-hmm. was a close friend of Andy Kaufman, and yes. he says it's all a hoax, that he okay. actually did have a daughter, but that's not her. Okay. Oh, okay. All, right. all right. Well, at least that was cleared up for me. Yeah, you. there you go. Well, ladies, um, it's always a pleasure. You're, you're, you know, delightful to talk to, and thanks a lot. And um, uh, good luck and have. Uh, but the holidays are big, aren't they? So you have to really use a lot of salve down there. And a lot it's of lotion the holiday season. <laughs> you got to put a lot of lotions down there. All right, thank you very much. Lotion on its skin, yes. Yeah, keep putting that lotion on it. Oh God. Thanks, wow. guys. Okay, see you later. Uh, bye bye. Chlamydia. Hmm. Oh, chlamydia. Now, first of all, they use rubbers. They don't. They don't do anything without a rubber. Yeah, but that thing slips off every so often. No, it doesn't. Oh, sure it does. And you can get. I tell you what, Gary. You know what? We can a, a we can joke all we want to, but if if you and I went to Vegas and we drove an hour, and we hung out and we were drinking and eating and having a good time, and and the girls were acting, you know, whether we did anything or not, it would be fun. I'm sorry. Yeah, how would you like? I'd watch the Super Bowl at the Bunny. What Ranch. is it that's, if you don't do anything? That's called the girlfriend experience. Mm. No, they'd rub that's you and too. stuff. The they'd rub experience. you. They'd mm, rub you. No, it's not. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, maybe just you a lap dance or something. All I need is a cocktail and some chicken fingers. Is there all is I a bar need. there. You don't have to mm. hire a girl. Yeah, yeah girls just come just up and, sh- and hang out with you, and that's yeah. free. And you know, you, you know what I like? I would have, I would have the barbecue sauce. I would have, the, and <laughs> I'd bib? have the bunny ranch, the bunny ranch <laughs> dressing here. That's what I'd have. <laughs> I'd have the barbecue, and then oh. right into the bunny ranch dressing. That would be the part that I'd would, hate: that being at the bar when they're just coming up to you, pretending to talk to you. I wouldn't eat anything from that place. Why not? I bet you, you know the wings are probably fantastic. You know, I got to oh, tell you, um, uh, in Very Charlotte, North filthy. Carolina, years ago at lunchtime, one of the best steaks you could get, and I think the strip club is still open. Oh, God, what's the name of it? But there was a strip club, and, and lots of guys would go at, at lunchtime. No, they got great steak. They would have steak. a steak. They got the best they'd steak. Have, they would have a, a steak at the, at the Pussycat Club. I think it's still open. Pussycat Club, still open. All right. Well, there they are. There are the Please. girls and another discussion of Obamacare and all of that. I wonder. And, he really didn't uh, make president... a case, though, did he, Jay? Well, he, made, he had to pay a quarter of a million dollars. Well, he really didn't seem that upset about it, did he? Well, he makes millions. I mean, yeah. on that show, they charge all this money. Okay, we'll be right back. Hey, folks. Jerry Sands with Kristen. I learned an awesome sign today. It's taint because it's going to be awesome. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to fingerspell it. So it's T-A-I-N-T. And then we're going to explain what a taint is. So first, we're going to sign vagina. 
Nope, not the vagina. Asshole? Nope, not the asshole. Between. So you're gonna sign the, the live long and prosper sign, uh, but on its side and with its palm facing towards you, and then you're gonna chop that a couple of times. So again, T-A-I-N-T, -T, not the vagina, not the anus, between. Hooray! Thanks for watching. Jay Thomas. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Afternoon. The Jay Thomas Show. It's the show that the average listener would do if they could do their own radio show. Sirius XM 104. <laughs>It wouldn't be a holiday without Jew Claus at the J. Thomas Show. That's right, uh, Jay. There, there he is, old <laughs> Jew Claus. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, there he is. Good afternoon, uh, Jay. The mixture of the two religions, you know, uh, right. not Santa, but or, or Hebrew Claus, you Hebrew can call him. Right. People Claus. Ira, the weatherman, is here. Now, Ira, you used to not uh, like Kevin Meany. How do you feel about him now? Kevin Meany feel? is a great person. He's a wonderful guy. Okay, wonderful guy. May he has. May he have all the best Christmas and the New Year's mm -hmm. for many, many good, happy, and healthy years. Thank you. Ira. I need to. I need to uh, make an apology. I thought Brooke Taylor was Brooke Baldwin from CNN. I made oh a big Oh my God! This is understandable. I made a big. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. Yeah, to Kevin, our good buddies. I'd run out right now to get him coffee mm -hmm. or tea uh -huh. or whatever well, he or wants. Me. And That's a good my idea. daughter loves Iris so much. I know. Just is she absolutely. around? Can we call her? Can we we call could her? call her. Yeah. You know. Well, she loves. She, she loves, loves Iris so much. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. By the way, on CNN, on the Brooke Baldwin show, which I've been on a number of times, and I really like her. She had Jack Tapper, and they ran the wrong. Do we have it, Garrett? They ran the wrong. Um, they pre-taped it, and they ran the the wrong tape of the. Mm. Uh, of the not the audition. What do you call it? The the like like it yeah, wasn't they were the recording right recording an interview, and she kind of screwed up. So she was like, "Let's start from the top." But they and, they, and the, then, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they ran the whole thing. Do you have it? Do you have that? It's very seldom do you see this on. On, and Jake goes in to talk about these presidential journeys. So, uh, Jake Tapper, first let's just begin with what more do you know about what happened on board Air Force One? Well, according to Mike Duffy and uh, Nancy Gibbs' book, The First President's Club, uh, or rather just The President's Club, uh, the two men, Ford and Carter, bonded a lot on that 1981 trip uh, about a few things they had in common. They hated fundraising, and they were still having to fundraise because they were raising money. Hang on, for their... hang on, Tapper. Sorry, let me cut you off. Well, I want you to, I'm sorry, I should have been more clear. Let's begin with the Air Force One. Did you see pool notes for, for this particular yes. trip? And yes, then... with the current. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. let's begin with that, and then I will ask you a follow, and we'll talk about Anwar Sadat's funeral. Wow. Okay. Okay. So we go. And Jake joins me now to talk about these presidential journeys. So, Jake Tapper, let's begin with this current uh, flight. What, what more do we know about what happened on board Air Force One? Well, President Obama, obviously... Now, does this go all the way through, Garrett, this one? Yeah. That's it, yeah. Then it goes now, here's what's, here's what's amazing about it. So few people watch CNN, no one complained. <laughs> no but one cared. Then they the show repeated and they ran it again. They just no, they did fucked not. up. Yeah, that's what the email that sent it came. So, so that yeah. so that means that the guys in the in the in the control room they weren't watching either. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, that's it what it says means. in the article. Somehow the botched and again entirely pre recorded segment made it onto the air on replays. Yeah. That means the guys in the control room don't give three shits about whatever that Jack Tapper report is. No. It's crazy. I like Jack. Uh, uh, let's go to Alex. It's gavel to gavel time. Ooh. I don't know what trial he's talking about. Yeah, uh, uh, Alex, what what trial are you covering that we should know about? Is it the the uh, Bernie Madoff one? Which one is it? No, but today is the anniversary of the Bernie Madoff. Uh, yes. Coming apart. Zimmerman. Yes, Zimmerman. Actually, yes. yes. You know exactly. Now the wife. Going. The wife said uh, he didn't point a gun at me and and drop all the charges, right? Well, they made an application to change the conditions of the bail that he no longer has to be a fifteen hundred feet away from Samantha Schreiber. And this is the girlfriend, right? 
the girlfriend, okay. and that he can also visit with her in her home. Oh. And oh. there was a sworn statement attached to this uh, application where she mm -hmm. says the police forced her into making those charges against wow. him that he brandished. Unfortunately, weapon. we ran the 911 call, and that's bullshit. Of course, exactly. It. And there are actual Supreme Court decisions on 9-11 calls where they're considered excited utterances, and that call can still be used against him, and he's on mm -hmm. felony charges. And well, you know what they say. You know what they say? You can use this if you want. No snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. Okay? Oh, yeah, that's but, heavy. But the that's a good one. That's true. She started a whole bunch of shit, and now she doesn't feel responsible for it. But she started it, got him in all kind of trouble. Well, I think but, he started it, Jay. I mean, he's the one that's you know living there. You know, they have all these weapons at the house. I mean, that's it's ridiculous. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I think so, she's a gun person, and maybe that's what attracted her to George. Yeah. So yeah. Right. it's oh, interesting okay. that, in a way, the state can actually prosecute both of them, her for filing so, a false police report mm -hmm. and him for brandishing a weapon. Huh. So, you know, listen, he's a scumbag, and that law is really ridiculous because... He's a scumbag. So they're going out together again. So they're back together. No, they, the court order is still in effect that he can't come within fifteen hundred feet of her. Can oh, they I, have I, I thought, can, Alex? Can they have phone sex? No, he's not allowed to make any contact with her. Didn't you say that he was allowed back in her house? Well, that's what the application is made for. Okay. That's one okay. of the conditions that um, his new attorney has asked for that he can go to back to her home. <laughs> You know, I want to change the subject. My my poor friend, uh, Mickey Sherman, uh, really oh. always believed that Mickey Skakel was um, was innocent, yeah. and he lost that trial, and That's there was sad. no DNA evidence, and it was, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. And so they really said that he, um, you know, represented him poorly. Right. And they ruined his reputation, and they've got a new trial. When does that trial start? That uh, he's out on bail now and everything. When Mike was out on bail, yes. There's no date mm -hmm. for that trial, but I did read that appeal, and I avoided saying anything on the app. I always said I didn't want to attack Mickey on your show. But you should read some of the charges that are in there, that he wasted the money on the defense of using it, <clears throat> trying to get out of his income tax problems, and he actually really? used some of the defense money to pay off some of his back taxes trying to avoid to go to jail and he was listing that now wait a minute was that was that payment or was it was it uh, investigation money ah that's exactly what the problem is he got a million dollar flat fee to do the defense which mm -hmm. included paying for investigators now he billed them with money that went to investigators but he never used the money with investigators he used it to pay back taxes to try and to avoid to go to jail. All he had to do now, was bring those witnesses, you know, that Michael Skakel was at his cousin's house, and he never brought those witnesses to court. I mean, that was that's really the crux of the problem. Wait, wait a minute now. Does that put Mickey in some sort of um, uh, jeopardy with the with the state of Connecticut? It might put his law license in jeopardy. I, I don't think it puts him in criminal jeopardy. But, wow. But if you read that complaint, it is just an attack on his lifestyle and what he was doing with the million dollars they gave him for the defense. And well, he was in real trouble, Kevin, and his wife. He was in trouble during, the, during uh, that trial? I he guess. Was in trouble? Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. Okay. he was fighting yeah. off these income tax charges for years. Okay. And he did it very cleverly where he kept it down to he served a year and a day and he got out for some good time of he filed well now he, he, he put in he, now wait a minute now he put in he always put in um uh the the uh, forms he he didn't he didn't you know not he, put it in he always have to file. he said he owed the money he said he owed the money but he didn't have the money and i don't know how the government works that but then he was waiting for the big score and the big score came and i guess yeah but if they can prove 
that he didn't use the money for investigation, then um, I'm sure that's a civil suit also, right? That would be bad for him, really bad. Yeah, but does he really have any money to sue him? You know, civil suits are one thing, but collecting Michael Skakel? damages are another. You mean Michael Skakel? Well, I mean even Mickey Sherman. Mickey, Mickey doesn't have any money. No. He doesn't have any money. You know what the no. great thing about the trial is, about Mickey Sherman is? They don't refer to him as Mickey Sherman as we all know him in the newspapers. They always refer to him as Michael Sherman. So I think Mickey's fine. Okay, good. And, and you know who Mickey. his uncle was? Alan Sherman. Hello, no mother. No kidding. Hello, mother. Hello, father. <laughs> and do you, know, do you know who the first guy was that I ever did stand up in front of? and had That was Alan my, Sherman, uh, you said. Yeah, yeah. I was, an, yeah, I was a sophomore in high school. I went up there. That's that right. He was great. so kind to and me. that was in New it's, Orleans? You went to like the yes, uh, hotel? Yes, the Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah, right. And then he invited my my dad and brother and I. We that went is to a great story. show. Wow. Do you he have was pictures wonderful. of uh, you and him together? You know, I we had them for years. We did. We had them for oh, years. I have no idea. You've got to find that. No idea where they, where they were. Well, Alex, gavel to gavel, we've got to find some trials out there for you to cover. Okay? Yeah, something will be coming up. But just to go back right. to Mickey for a second, he mm -hmm. tried the first murder case that was on court TV, and he got a not guilty on a similar defense as the Jody Arias defense. Oh. What trial now, the one was that? that? He won that case, a, a, a post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. murder. And he well, the case. guy that killed the people in San Francisco got off on the Twinkie defense. He had eaten a bunch of Twinkies, and the sugar caused him to go in and kill the mayor and his and his and the gay the gay assistant or whatever mm -hmm. it was the gay mayor, whatever it was. Yeah. That he got off. was his he defense, didn't... but it didn't work. He was convicted. I thought it. No, he was. He was. He, he did very little time. He did very little time. And he killed himself, didn't he? He died. He died a free man. I don't know. You know. Um, what about the affluenza? Now, but by the way, have you heard about the affluenza from Texas, where the the kid killed four people in a traffic accident? There were others laid out, a half dead, all over the highway, and be, and the and the lawyer said because he was so affluent, his parents didn't teach him right from wrong. He beat twenty years. He he's got, got probation. Affluenza. Wow. Yeah. And and in the it's never going to happen to me. The trustee mm -hmm. revealed how much money he's recovered. He's got seventeen billion dollars to distribute to the victims, so the victims uh, might not be in such bad shape. Well, I've read that they're going to make maybe you know like twenty or thirty cents on the dollar. But here's what they've done: if I invested a million bucks with Bernie Madoff over twenty-five or thirty years or whatever, uh, I've got my million bucks back at some point. I might have gotten it back. Three times I might have made three million. They want to claw back that money that that people made, and and a lot of people don't have that money anymore, and it's and and so it's ill-gotten gains, but they weren't aware of it. So they got their principal back. They thought they had principal waiting for them, but they got it back in these in these false uh, percentage payouts, and they want to get those people's money back. Now that's a rough one. That's that's a bad Some one. people have left the United States so yep. they can't sue them on the quarterback laws. I would have left the United States too. I believe in leaving the I believe in leaving the country that turns on. Go with Butch you know. Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Alex, uh, always good. Uh, gavel, gavel. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You, by the way, the uh, movie that I spoke that uh, Pat Doswalt uh, had, had recommended on, on TMC, it's a really strange film with the, the wheelchair guys, A-A-L-T-R-A, Altra, is available on Netflix streaming. Oh. It's just crazy to watch. I can watch that. And then the other house. one, yeah. Wind Journeys, is so gorgeous and such an interesting movie. I think I think you'll just enjoy it. Now, yes, they, are, they, they do have um, uh, subtitles. subtitles. Not hard to read at all, and um, you know I I, I usually and watch movies. And you can movies. pause it if you miss it, if you miss it. You know you can go back. I didn't know that till last night. I'm watching Turner Classic Movies. My son wants to go up and get a drink or whatever, and I, and I go, "Well, you're gonna miss it." He goes, "No, no, we're gonna pause it." Cable pause. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. Oh my god! I had no, Garrett, no idea. You've never no been. idea. No idea. Oh wow, that's you can the best start way to watch TV. You can start programs over again, or yeah. you know, you come in at the last five minutes. You go, I want to watch that from the beginning. You just I it. It. absolutely stunned. Yeah, I because mean, I would go into it to like you know, I 
I didn't like it at first, but but I really got into Boardwalk Empire. And let me mm-hmm. tell you something else I got into. I'm into Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. I I I can't believe it, but I really, I really. What, what like part it. do you see yourself in? Uh, Governess. Da- Downtown Countess? Abbey. No, Downton Abbey. Baron? I don't see myself anywhere. No? No. Fuck no. Okay. The guy looks like me. I'd be in the bowels of that kitchen. Okay. Uh, you know what I would play? Pedro. Be fucking Pedro I like down that. there in the, in the, the bowels of it. Uh, I don't know if we have this or not, but um, in Kansas City, uh, well, I have a sign in front of me. Uh, a uh, Sonic drive-in has had to apologize that when the Redskins came to play the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they put an unfortunate sign up in what front did they of their... Put Kansas City Chiefs will scalp the Redskins, <laughs> uh-huh. feed them whiskey, and send them back to the reservation. Um, they have had to apologize. Oh uh, God! They were they were whipped forty five to ten. What, was that last? Why weekend, did they have to apologize for that? Because they said scalp. They said scalp them. How about send them back to the reservation and give them whiskey? Um, Patrick Linnow, Vice who's President I, who, of Public who Relations. Think, who's, I, whose idea was this? It's a clever sign guy at the store. He makes up many The sign was signs. created. This is their oh, official went a little statement. Too far this okay. Time. The sign was created by an employee who is known for creative use of his signs, but sadly this sign was not, done in not anymore. Case. What were some of his good signs? Yeah, I don't know. I, well, we'll have to find some of the good yeah, ones. Because obviously, um, you know, he, he a did professor, have a record. This is what I love. A professor of anthropology mm-hmm. at Columbia University was contacted by NBC News, and he said the sign was shockingly racist. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask a question. There are reservations right now oh. where the alcoholism rate is some huge, like, 50% of the people mm-hmm. are alcoholics. The unemployment is absolutely horrible. And they're still trying to live their their Native American culture, which is fine. But it, it <laughs> I believe it's true that there is something in the uh, makeup of the Native American that alcohol drives them nuts. I don't think so. You know, I, I don't believe that. Really? No, All I right? don't. They are suing. There's a reservation that is suing a um, like a bodega that serves beer and alcohol just off the reservation. They yeah. want it moved. You know, away from there because the the guys and the w- women too, they can't resist going out there and getting completely loaded. You remember Jimmy the Greek who would say, "Well, the black man was 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 built differently," you know, because they bred the big well, black man with the. With hold the, it a second, but excuse me a minute. Yes, we were not. Our ancestors weren't chased by wild animals, and that's what he said. Mm-hmm. That they have the fast twitch muscles, which is true. I mean. They, nobody's chasing anybody in Sicily for a long, long time, Garrett, unless it was a, a moor or a hun, you know. But that's what he said. He was fired for that, of course, right? No, he said they were bred. But it was, it's, was. It's, it's similar. No, he said to, they were bred. It's similar yeah, to what, what's being said here right now. It's like, well, you know, the, uh, the Native American Indians, they can't drink because they have something special. Isn't that true, though? No, that's not true. That That's just okay. some kind of, uh, you know, uh, Something has been passed on from generation to generation. Don't give Indian whiskey. Oh, no. You don't think the Irish can hold their liquor better than other nationalities? I think everybody has no, the same can't. problem. I think we all, they you know, really? we, we all have the same problem, yeah. My Irish friends plan their drunk a day ahead of time. <laughs> well, Jay, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> I was at a party this past uh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. At the BDCC Bronx Democratic Committee, uh, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. it was what, so what, beautiful. What, what, what candidate thinks you're a powerful man to be in that? Well, any candidate. What, what candidate? It was a county committee uh, uh, mm-hmm. Christmas party. I bet. Now, now, what and did you have for you? What did I you had eat? Two what was the glasses of wine? A box wine right. or a bottle of wine? A, um, two glasses. What were the hors d'oeuvres? What were the hors d'oeuvres? So like? they did. They had um, chicken, mm-hmm. lettuce, oh, yeah. tomatoes. Mm. So I had chicken and tomatoes. Did you take any home? Tomatoes. Did you take any no, chicken I home? No, I did not. Oh, all right. 
But I had a great time. I drank well, wine. Sounds like it. two glasses <laughs> of wine. Fantastic. Wow, what does you must have to do with the flying. Native Americans? Well, the Native Americans we were talking about? No. So you just plot it in with BDCC Bronx Democrat. A story about yourself or <laughs> county <laughs> reason. And okay, tomorrow, we were, we were talking about. Oh, he's drinking. He was talking about his drinking. Did there's you say tomorrow, Charo was there? Did you say? Tomorrow, oh, yeah. Tomorrow, there's oh, you said another, Charo was there. Tomorrow, there's Charo. another party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At a uh, hundred and thirty fourth Street in Manhattan. Okay. Ooh, we don't St. care. Peter's we don't care. Church. Are the Indians? And by the way, it's not Jewish. Hey, Garrett. I know. Good, good luck getting out of that the neighborhood with your scalp. Okay. The right. <laughs> you like that one, Kevin? Street. Yes, I do like that one. Very good. Thank you. Hold on a minute. Hold on. To walk on hundred thirty fifth. I know you're not. Uh, Eman uh, from Newport News says. The uh, bitch you did after the truck driver called about his cheating wife should be a rerun for sure. You actually laid out a way that you would get her back and then torture her mentally for the rest of her life. I spit, I spit water that I was drinking all over the dashboard. Uh, the way you laid that out. Well, thank you. That was very brilliant. Much. You know. Yes, I'm just. You know, happy that I could. And that's you know, help what you, you should do in your live show. You know, you need a desk to sit out there and you tell mm-hmm. stories. You know, I think uh, we another can work bad it out. picture. Sheila sent me this one. Barack Obama is talking to a very attractive white woman. I to the know right of him. this is. She's the prime she minister. She is holding of, uh, a Denmark. Uh, Denmark yes, uh, she's holding a picture with uh, uh, Mandela's face on it, and Madiba. they are both laughing at the funeral. Madiba. Everyone else is very somber, including Michelle Obama, very somber. And so that plus shaking the hand of uh, of the communist guy, uh, things aren't good. We yes, lost a great good. man, Jay. Yes. We lost a great man in Who? Nelson Mandela. Ariel Castro. Oh. <laughs> he shook Ariel Castro's hand. <laughs> let's go to Governor. Let's go to wow. Governor Jesse Ventura. Jesse, oh. uh, come in. What conspiracy do you want to share with us today? Hello, Jay. It's Governor yes, Ventura. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that team's defense blanketed the Indians' offense. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Jay, just so you know, I just got this news over the wire. Mm-hmm. Obama was not taking a selfie. He just received a Facebook friend request from Fidel Castro and Alex Bennett. True <laughs> <laughs> story. Yeah. Hey, Jay. Yes. Do you think you can get an ex-Marine from Howard birthday tickets? <laughs> All right, Jesse Ventura, thank you very much. I'm not sure if that's really him or not. No, that is thank him. You. That's no doubt about Let's it. Let's go to Chris, who's in Indiana. Yes, Chris, uh, Indiana, you're named for Indians. There yes, you are. In Indiana, so, Indiana. Welcome. Yes, in Indiana. Welcome. There's, there's two brief answers to why Indians and Native Americans can hold their liquor. One of them is they have not been uh, exposed to alcohol for long enough to create an enzyme. And the mm-hmm. enzyme is what uh, is what they're lacking, so they mm-hmm. actually can't process the liquor, the alcohol. So, so that is a that it's like a certain um, um, I, I Jewish. Can't, I can't uh, believe that. C- certain Jewish people have a tendency to have Crohn's disease. Uh, exactly. I believe it's the. How do you say it, uh, Ira Askadaski? How do, what's that tribe of, of of Hebrews? The Askadaski Jew. How do you say it? They call it the. Uh... Ashkenazi, yes. Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews. Yes. Yeah, they, they, sometimes you go to the doctor, Hasidic Kevin, they will ask Jews. you. Yeah, they have special. Well, they're uh, they have A lot of the Hasidic the, Jewish people well, are inbred. Let's not, let's yes. not, let's not go there. Uh, that's, why they all wear, that's why they all wear the same hat. The payers. Um, why would a group of Jews have the word Nazi in their name? <laughs> no, Ashkenazi. I don't think it's Nazi. I don't, I don't think yes. that's Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go to Matt of Pasadena. Matt, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show. How are you? Uh, no, down below there, line line uh, line three. Yes, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I, since you guys were talking about uh, musicians having their stuff used by politicians, even though they don't want it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was funny yesterday uh, after hearing how big of an Obama fan Kevin is. Mm-hmm. Opie and Anthony were doing like a live commentary on mm-hmm. Obama's mm-hmm. speech from the funeral yesterday. Yes. And mm-hmm. one of the drops they used to make fun of him was the, <laughs> I don't care, I don't care. The big fans you over on Open Anthony. Yeah. Good for you, Kevin. Well, you know, they, uh, 
I, I, have, I, I can't do anything about that. Can Garrett's I? favorite show. Yeah. It, it, that drop is like two or three minutes. I mean, it goes through the whole ding, 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 ding. Yeah, they, <laughs> really? They have the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, meow, meow. Yeah, meow. So they, they play the whole thing. They'll play, they, yeah. they, they I, think they, the I think they actually yeah. they pee during it. That's how long yes. the drop is. They go okay. to the bathroom when they come back. Well, that's fine Thank you. me. Thank you, Matt, for another sighting. People always ask me to uh, do that. Mike, New York. Go ahead. Mike of New yeah, York yeah. on the Jay Thomas Show. Go zoom, ahead. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> Mike again. Um, I was just going to say, Kevin, you know that the uh, incident rate of diabetes, especially in like the Hopi and the Navajo, mm -hmm. because they have adapted their bodies to very little food intake. And now they have all this sugar and carbohydrates that they take. No, they don't. That's not yeah. true. Yes. That's because they're eating oh, yes. shitty food, you know. That's why their diabetes exactly. rate is up. Yeah, they're so eating. So the Hopi Indians, they have. They oh, by the way, I went. You know, we casino? went to no good Arizona, wherever. My wife and I are traveling, and we go to like a reservation store, and 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 I keep saying the Hopi Indians. Well, I got to tell you, mm. uh, oh, oh. and I know they didn't like that at all. The woman <laughs> kept going, "It's Hopi." I went, "Oh," because I remember watching the old cowboy movies, and it was the Hopi Indians. You know, they hopped up and down and all that. You know, and then my favorite were the the <laughs> the Fagawis. Where the Fagawi? You know, the <laughs> I love that. How about the Fagazi? How about the Hody Does? Jail. How about the Hody Do tribe? No I love that tribe Jail. also. Yeah. All right, J Ara, wh Empire where are you in for show free? tonight? Where I am appearing at the uh, Empire City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Garrett, slot comedy machine, seller. third, third from the door tonight. Comedy seller for you? Yes. In New York City? Oh, yes. Ten forty. And what street's that on? Make it Make fast. Do All right. And tomorrow we do it all over again. See you later. Thank you. I've had almost Everybody. as much fun as you had. Yes. Don't get yes.